is DK and Sage from Takayaki Anime. Yo! And we are back. This is episode 68. And we're going to be talking about our initial thoughts on the fall anime for 2020. This is a good season, I have to say. I feel this is, is this feels like we're getting back to where things it, it, life's resuming. Let's let's put it that way. Yes. Life <laughs> life's resuming where it was and and we're getting back to a better spot than we have been. Yes. So um we have 12 shows that we're going to be talking about today. I hope that I blended the list together properly. Because there's a bunch of overlap and um, a bunch of stuff that I couldn't get to. Um, stuff that I mentioned in the last episode, but oh uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the back the backlog. All right. First show, uh, we're going to be talking about. Hmm? I got to as many as I think I could, so. Yeah. The, the first show we're going to be talking about is. Uh, uh, hundred man no ichi no ue ni o ari. Wait, that did Or what was the? I stand on a hundred or no? Yeah, stand a on a million lives or something like that. Million, million lives. Okay. Yeah. I have everything up. I'm st- I'm standing. Inside. I'm standing on a million lives. That's what it is. Yeah. I'm standing on a million lives. Do you watch so. this one? I did, but I don't remember what it's about. <laughs> um, okay, so. Ooh, I do remember. Um, so, the blue guy. Uh-huh. I think, I don't remember if we had mentioned it before, but it's the dude with the cool voice. I don't think we mentioned it before. Yeah, I love his voice. I like him, but he's a CG blue man, so I'm like, nah. Yeah, I'm a little disappointed in, in that aspect of it as well. Um, I'm trying to remember what it, what is his voice from? Because now that you say it, I'm like, yeah, and you know what? I do recognize his voice. I can't yeah, so it, he's so. from uh, Ni Ning Shinobu then that ninja one where he's like the blue, he's that that yellow round thing. Um, and then he's from from the uh, there's one where I think he was a dog. And uh, I, I know there's a higher profile anime that he's from. <laughs> yeah, I can remember it's these like obscure ones. Actually, if we go into it, does it show like the the um, cast, and then we can just click and see? Um, I mean, it gives the names of the cast, but I don't remember what the what do they call them? I can't remember. God damn it! Uh, now, now, see, now you gotta be thinking about that. Yeah, I blame you for that. That can't be all that he's from. Uh, okay, we gotta go to. Um, <laughs> I gotta go to uh, An- Anime News Network. Why is the word that way? Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Good lord, good lord, Net- good lord. Search for hundred lives. Okay. Who is the game? No. Okay. Well, anyways, while you're searching for that. Yes. I'll I'll continue on. So, for those of you who don't know, this is an isekai anime. Yes. It uh, tells the story of Yusuke, uh, who gets transported to this other world. He is uh, transported along with Yu and Kusu, who have also both been transported to this world. Yu has been there since well before, and Kusu came in right after. He is the third one to get transported. That's right. Where? I remember um, what the show's, which show this Oh, okay, okay. Um, and uh, he, so Iu is a fire mage, Kusu is a warrior, and his very first job title that he gets is Farmer. Uh, so this is like the 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 pro player because he is a gamer. They've made that abundantly clear from the very beginning. 
getting the worst profession, or at least one of the worst professions uh, you could ever have. Because unfortunately, whatever profession you have dictates what weapons and equipment you can hold. Uh, the catch of this whole thing is, is that you can die and you will respawn. Problem being is, is that if all of your party members die, you die. For real. There's no coming back. So his whole thing is, is that he, he has some backstory to him. He, he had some friends Previously, it seems like he may have moved away or lost touch or just in in the course of his life, he became something of a loner. So his whole thing so far has been that he tends to go off on his own. And he doesn't, even though it looks like because there has been some some hints about future things to happen, even though it looks like he is going to be the leader of the group. Right now, he just kind of does his own thing. Um, and it's just because he considers his teammates to be kind of useless. Which, to their credit, or to his credit as far as that goes, I mean, right now they kind of are. But it's not like not for lack of trying on their part. Um, and, and each one of them has specific character developments as well. Um, going through so far, you has become very much, you know, she seemed like the higher tier, you know, preppy, popular girl who's great at sports, great at academics, this, that, and the other thing. But you find out there is more to her story from her past where she had kind of some abuse it seemed like, and she kind of started to question her own life. And it wasn't until she really came full circle into that, that she realized, well, she tried to find meaning in it through her friends. And so being put into a situation where she doesn't know everyone, she's trying to be friendly towards everyone, but there's definitely some cracks in her armor that began to come in a show after a while. Uh, Kuse, Kusu is she's she was she has a disease a hereditary disease because her mom has it as well um, that causes her to be very weak. Uh, through school she doesn't go she doesn't participate in PE uh, she just doesn't have the physical fortitude or stamina and of course she's the warrior. Um, and it kind of seems like, I guess, that kind of correlates over into the... Well, okay. It in, in the game world, in the other world, she has her body, but it's improved. Like, she can do things. But because she spent so long not doing things, she's still weak, I guess, mm. in that regards. So... It, it, it's the the disease that she has in the real world isn't in the game world, but it's because of the fact that her actual physical fortitude from the real world carries over to it. So because she hasn't been able to do so much, she is as weak as she is. Okay. So like she can't, you know, her 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 class is supposed to hold a two handed longsword. She can't hold it. Like yeah, she tries, she can just throw it. <laughs> she tries to pick it up, and just it just it, immediately she'll just drop it, essentially, or she'll just throw it. You know, well, I think the only one she can throw is her actual sword, not even the long sword. Oh, okay. So, so just, far, I've only watched one episode. Yeah, that, that's they... because she doesn't know what she she has two swords. She has a short sword, regular sword, basically, and a long sword. Okay. So the long sword she can't even pick up. Like the minute she she puts it into existence, it just the tip of it falls flat to the ground, and she's just sitting there struggling with it. The long sword she can hold, but it's very much like she doesn't know what to do with it. She's never done anything like that before. She's never even played video games, so she has no idea. You know, she spent her whole life once she was able to 
trying to learn more about medicine. If she had been made a healer, it would have been perfect for her. Because she had been studying about, you know, her disease and how she could potentially cure that. And, you know, but of course she was made the warrior. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And then even the main character, eventually, I guess, when you level up your character class to enough, you get another character class. Okay. So he leveled the farmer up by taking out the one piece from... So basically he made a stick weapon where a blunt instrument where he could kill goblins with in order to level up, and he did. And the very next f- profession he gets is a freaking chef. <laughs> so, bonus on that, though, is at least he got a bladed weapon. This is butcher's knife, or, like, you know, chef's knife. Oh, okay. Something. So, and then the, the bonus that also is the fact that because of it, he's able to look at, like, he's able to look at enemies... And kind of see, based upon the fact that he can see the meat inside of them, he can see their weak points, essentially. Uh, so he he, he kind of has that going for him. Wow. But literally, he's like, killing things with kitchen utensils, essentially. Making the best out of the worst possible situation. It really is. It really is. So, um... Later on, they're also joined by another uh, female character, Yuka, um, and she ends up being... Because the other one's... Oh, no, no, no. So Yu is the wind mage. Yuka is a fire mage. Ooh. And, God, y- Yuka growing up fantasized about being a magical girl. So now that she's in the position she's in, she kind of takes it in that regards as well. Oh, my God. So that makes for an interesting dynamic, to say the least. Um, but, yeah. So looking at the... I, the uh, I, didn't, I wasn't sure whether they were going to have more characters, but looking at the uh, list on um, any list, it seems like those are the characters. So our party has formed from where I'm at, at least. And I think I'm only four or five episodes into it. Um, so yeah, no, it's, it's, it's an interesting anime, I will say. Um, they've alluded to the fact that they're, because every time you clear a quest, you get to ask the game master one thing. Yeah. Um, and both you and Each person get to ask? No, one per, one person gets to ask one thing. Dang. You get to ask one question. So... You asked a question from when she was first here and did her quest. Kusu also asked her, her question. Yus- Yusuku, is, he asked his question, and it um, kind of alluded to the fact that it seems like the the monsters from this world, are there's going to be some sort of invasion in our world for monsters. And the reasoning why they're being they were put here to do something is because they're essentially training in order to potentially combat that when it comes about but there's no specific timeline to say when that's going to come about it's just hey you you got a glimpse into the future of this is what's going to happen some like giant monster came down on like I don't know if it's Tokyo. I can't remember if it was Tokyo Tower or some other giant building or whatever. And then all they, all you see is 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 uh, Yusuke and his party just kind of standing there to go and combat him. But then it cuts. So something happens. Something goes down. I'm sure they fight, but I think it was more or less. He, I, I don't remember the exact question he asked, but I think it was more or less to, to the to the effect of. It almost seems like his future self did this to his past self in order to start the ball rolling in this regards. Okay. Kind of like a Terminator thing. Kind of. I don't know. There's some interesting things going on. So I, I'm, I'm definitely liking this one. Um, I do hate the fact that freaking Game Master's CGI 
I don't see why they had to do that because everything else is not. Um, but I, again, I'm, I am noticing there are certain aspects of certain animes that are using CGI for specific things. Um, and I think that's just their way of being able to cut budget in regards to certain things. So they're not having to spend so much. Which I guess right now I, I can I'm okay with just because I understand you know the way the world is right now it can probably help in that regards and they probably need to do that. Um, I'm hoping this is not going to be a continuing trend in that regards, or that you know now all of a sudden CGI animes are just going to become more prevalent because no, <laughs> <laughs> I would rather not have that but uh, i guess we'll see how this pans out but all in all i i'm definitely good with this i i enjoy i've enjoyed the watch so far um i like the fact that you know yeah it is important the you know they do show for the most part battles but they're not like intense with this this is more i think geared towards the character development and the progress with characters than, than, than anything else. The fantasy aspects are there. Battling is there. Don't get me wrong. But it's not like... If, if I had to weigh it in as far as, you know, like, action versus character development, I'd say we're, like, 60 to 70% action with the character development, like, really coming close right behind that kind of thing. Okay. So. So, uh, in regards to that big blue man, the Game Master... Um, it is not who I think it is. Ah. He's doing something similar with his voice compared to somebody who I love. Um, and that voice actor is named Norio Wakamoto. Uh, gotcha. I went to anime... Hmm? Gotcha, go ahead. Keep going. Yeah, so I went to... I went to the wrong website. I meant to go to anime, my anime list. <laughs> um... And he has done so many different shows. Uh, do you remember Azumanga Daya? Yeah. He was the cat. Let me make sure. Um, yeah, if you end up going to, uh, to uh, my anime list, then look up uh, Norio Akamoto, then you'll see like his 800 shows that he's done voices on. But... Um, nice. Yeah, he is one of my favorite uh, male voice actresses. I like the way that he um, emphasizes certain syllables and, like, drags certain syllables out. And, like, mm -hmm. his deep, sultry voice is very soothing to him. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. um, God, I haven't thought about that in a minute. Years. Yeah. <laughs> so... Um, uh, as far as episodes watched, uh, you've watched five, and mm -hmm. I've only watched one. Um, it sounds like you like the story so far. For me, one thing that I do like about the um, story is, like, it takes place in both worlds. Mm -hmm. And I like how um, I haven't seen the part where they talk about, like, the um, hereditary diseases that one that um, that one character, that warrior has, and... Um, I don't know the uh, background of some of the characters, but I do like the fact that if they have an ailment or a certain situation in the real world, it directly translates over to the, um, the fantasy the world. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, um, there's one show that I've seen. I can't remember which show it is, but there is a... Uh, it may be Monica Magica, but there is a character who is in a wheelchair, mm -hmm. and when they go into the fantasy world, I I believe that they can walk fine. No, no, no. Actually, no. They, they have a, a floating wheelchair in the other world. But, I, like, they're usually, like... In some shows that I've seen, I, I believe that, like, if somebody... It's kind of like a power fantasy. They're like, oh, well, I had this ailment in the real world. Now that I'm here, I'm, like, perfectly fine. And, like, they get to kind of mm -hmm. enjoy that. And then if they end up going back, then it's kind of, like... A big letdown. Yeah, it's a letdown because mm -hmm. uh, they lose the uh, power that they had before. Um, Log Horizon did that. 
really? the the character the what was it the samurai boy uh -huh. he was actually in a wheelchair okay but in that world he walked just fine okay dang i haven't watched lock horizon in so long i think they're coming out with another season too Ooh. I, think. I think you're what i heard so which is sad because yeah. I do enjoy the series, don't get me wrong. I'm a really big fan of the series, but uh, Crunchyroll recently lost the rights to season one. Oh, where did it go to? No idea. No idea. But they lost the rights to season one, so now the only thing they have is season two on their website. Okay. Um, I, thought, I thought about that, and it's the reason I knew about it, and someone mentioned the fact that they were going to watch because they saw season three was going to come out. So they were going to binge watch season one and two to remind themselves what was what had happened on it. And yeah, I was, I was thinking the exact same thing. They got disappointed because they went to go watch it. And the only season that's on Crunchyroll is season two. OK, so um, I'm curious if it's like an Aniplex thing, because Aniplex is one of the distributors where I can see like the show just disappear. And the only way you can get it is on their three hundred dollar DVD box set. Um, and then ev eventually it'll move over to funny, but I keep calling it Funchimation. <laughs> Funimation. <laughs> um, and then you'll only be able to watch it either on Funimation now or maybe Hulu. So back in October, someone mentioned the fact the original license holder no longer has the rights to it. And it was just unfortunate timing. Does it still work on high dive? All I get is an error saying I'm region locked. Still available on my region's anime streaming sites. So high dive? Possibly. High dive, potentially. Okay. The season yeah. expired on Crunchyroll without any announcement, as happens from time to time. License rights don't last forever without an announcement. We'll never know why for certain. Uh, it seems to be on Amazon Prime. Okay. Yeah, that, that would make sense. If it's a... Um... If it's a show produced by uh, that, where instead of Aniplex having it, like Sentai Filmworks has it, then it'll most likely go to either Amazon or Hulu I, or High Dive because mm -hmm. that's where they put their shows. So, um, if we end up getting like a Verve account, then I think High Dive is still on there. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, do you have a favorite character so far? Um, I barely know anything about him, so I just like the the first. Girl I mean, thing because she's confident. Well, see, that's the problem with me is that I know, yeah, she is confident, but I know it's a facade. Ah. Like she plays it being confident because she's scared. Okay. Like right now, it's kind of hard to say which character I really enjoy only because all of them have their own character flaws uh -huh. and none of them are like outstanding in any sort of way i mean i do admire uh use case of he's put it in a rough situation and like you said because he's given such crappy professions like he's making the best out of a worst at a out of a bad situation and he's trying to make sure that you know it, they don't die essentially yeah. um you know I, I, I but see i get his his selfish nature you know the fact that yeah it's it's not so much the fact of quote unquote we don't die it's come out unquote he doesn't die because then if he doesn't die it, it benefits them as well. Yeah. Because he's like, but, I'm pretty sure I can figure it out. I'm just going to make sure I don't die. Yeah. But it's like, well, yeah, it's good. Because then, you know, once if, as long as you can complete it and you don't die, the rest of the party will go back to the real world at the end of the quest. But you're you're still not working as a team. Yeah. So, you know, it's like, I get I get him, and I do admire him for that regards, but everyone right now, we're, we're going into the character development phase. It's like, 
you can't I can't say there's a character I necessarily enjoy because all of them are showing their flaws right now. Mm. And we'll have to see here in the next couple of episodes how we start overcoming these flaws. Okay. Um, so Kusue is is I mean, she has obviously uh, her own debilitating disease and it's not necessarily a character flaw, but she did end up killing something. Surprisingly enough, she killed something, and um, she had a panic attack. Oh. She she like to her, even though she killed a goblin, it she felt like she skewered him with the with her sword, the short sword, mm -hmm. and and felt the impact and the blade going through, and it's like eating at her essentially. Mm -hmm. So. You know, she has to overcome not only her weakness, but also she has to overcome not wanting to kill, per se. Um, she has, the very episode after that, she kind of did start to go with that. So I guess maybe, um, even though she was kind of lame in the beginning, Kusue is probably maybe my favorite character in that regards. Okay. Working my way through that. I won't spoil if you're gonna. Are you gonna watch more of it? Are you so, gonna this one go, are you let this one go to the back burner? So the next question on this one is will you continue the show? I will, uh, <laughs> I will continue. I will continue the show. I will say that I will continue the show. Looking at the I'm rest. Yeah, looking at the rest of the season, uh, this is a back burner. Uh, so I will say because it was a part in it is that she. While facing a bigger opponent, and like I said, she has, you know, the problem with the fact that she can't hold that two-handed sword. Mm -hmm. Well, what she did was, is, I think it was, um, like a minotaur or some sort of bull creature, some big creature, essentially, was charging in at her, and she was cycling through her weapons. Well, right before it gets to her, she selects the two-handed sword and it starts to appear in her hands but because it appeared right when the monster got to her so before the point could actually become too much in the weight and the it's this point dropped the the momentum of the monster carried him into the blade I mean, so to me, that was that was good thinking. That was like she took, an, you know, she knew she had a problem with holding that sword, but she knew she needed something with more, you know, impact for this. So she timed it to where right when it was going to reach her, the blade appeared and then it skewered itself, essentially. OK, so this seems like a really smart fantasy show. Yeah, I would say. Yeah. I mean, it's taking some kind of video game aspects and such like that, um, which I'm okay with. But, you know, because the video game aspects of it kind of draw you out a little bit, I feel like. Mm -hmm. Like, it's it definitely makes you feel like you're like, well, it's like a game now, you know. But, you know, they kind of try to explain that away and let you know, well, it is. But at the same time, if they don't, you know, if they all, if they all die, then they die. So, yeah. Anyways, so yeah, no, I will definitely be continuing. Um, I think this is going to be a pretty decent one. It's not like my A plus top of the tier anime for this season, but it's definitely up there. I would say. Okay. Yeah, there. Um, there's a sh another fantasy show that's out this season, and if I were to watch one, this one would be higher on the list than the other one. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh. <laughs> I like watched it and then completely forgot what happened in it. <laughs> but um, but yeah, um, if I get some time, I, I take another crack at it. Uh, the next show we're gonna be talking about is a salt lily bouquet. Ah, this is uh, all you on this one. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm to this again. <laughs> I'll this at the same time. Um, so. Because there's another show that I watched that's like almost identical to this one. And. So on, on Earth, in the near future, humanity faced imminent destruction from a mysterious giant creature known as Huge. The entire they world have... unites against Huge and successfully develops a weaponry known as Charm by combining science and magic. Charm exhibits high rates of synchronization with teenage girls, go figure, and the girls who use Charm are viewed as heroes called Lilies. Throughout the world, Garden Military Academy academies are established to train lilies to face the huge and to serve as bases to protect the guide and guide people this is a story about girls or fighting girls who aim to become lilies at one such garden yeah um i'm skimming through the um the oh okay okay um, so, one thing that I do like is the monsters are smart. Um, they're like these um, big orb things mm-hmm. that have um, they're like you know the the wire that holds up like like suspension bridges? Mm-hmm. Where it's like a bunch of cables like Cable, intertwined. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It has a bunch of cables that come like it's what it seems like to me is this this a mass of cables with armor plating around it, and then it can shoot out pieces of armor plating mm-hmm. and use those as like blades, and it has like a bunch of different arms. Um, that's one of the monsters that they fought in the first episode, and I thought that that like them fighting those monsters was pretty cool. Um, it's kind of the same type of show where the main character is like one of the pow- one of the most powerful characters. She has this latent ability, and she's going to start at the school. She meets one um, girl who's going to end up being like either her roommate or her best friend, and they're going to spend time like spend the whole season together. And um, it's interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, there's another show that's similar um, this season, and out of the two, I like the other one better but i don't remember exactly everything that happened in this first episode because i watched them a week apart and um it was in, like i did like the monsters that they're fighting gotcha because they seemed like like mechanically smart where it's like a machine like a computer could be smarter than a human in certain situations um, <clears throat> but yeah, so how many episodes did I watch? I watched one. Uh, do I like the story so far? It's the story is kind of like run of the mill. Um, I can't remember what Pretty exactly. Stereotypical. Yeah, I can't remember what exactly makes this one more like its own unique thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't think of there if there are any like standout characters. Um. Because the main character always seems the more unique out of the um, out of the bunch, because it's always like the crew that's been there and it's been established, and then how the new char- how the new main character like comes in and kind of changes things. Um, will I continue this? Ah, just like the last one. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I was like if, if, if I if I can get time, uh, then yes. And um, but yeah, I like the I like the other one better. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I saw Lily Bouquet. If you like um, girls fighting monsters and everything I mean, runs through an academy, just looking at any chart, I mean, this is the rating has gotten pretty low, and it's kind of towards the bottom of the list of the animes for this season. So seems pretty run of the mill general not we're not really adding anything as far as uh uh you know yeah the synopsis seemed 
made the show seem like more than it is. Yeah. Um, the weapons, they, they're like, it changes from its haltered shape mm-hmm. to its fighting shape. Like, it, like, it's, like, it's a sword. It yeah, it's like it's a sword. And it's like, when the sword's out, it's deployed. And then we need to put it up, it like shrink, like it doesn't shrink to get smaller to get holster, it just changes shape and then they just put another back. So it's like nothing special. Mm-hmm. Um, but I haven't seen all the weapons, and maybe if they need to power up, it'll change again. But like it's it's predictable, like the like it's it's not oh, like yeah. the god like there's, the god eater weapons. You already know because you already said it. You guarantee you, yeah. There's going to be a power up. The weapon will change again. So either they're going to change again because they have to power up, or there's going to be some way of actually combining them to where the two join forces or something like that and become far greater than the sum of their whole, and then become and then can take down some big bad dude. I mean, it's things like that. It seems yeah. pretty run and like, <laughs> and then all of that is like the place where I originally saw that concept was Power Rangers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, like, if you break it but, down to its bare bone minimum, I mean, yeah, I mean, we're talking like you know Power Ranger or um, oh god, what was that older cartoon? Common right? No. 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 Oh. Voltron. Voltron. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're talking either Voltron or Power Rangers, depending upon, I guess, what generation you were born into. Yeah. I would say the one show that, like, impressed me as far as, like, the weapons being something special is God Eater. hmm Because the weapon ate the thing you killed and, like, absorbed the core. And upgraded itself, so mm-hmm. it's like that. That well, see, that's a constantly changing, constantly shifting thing. Then, yeah, and like for this one, it it, it just seems kind of run of the mill. But um, yeah. The next show we're gonna be talking about is Dungeon. Ah, this the the sequel we should have had. Yeah, so I am caught up <laughs> up to last week. Uh, I think I watched the current one, so that came out on Friday. Yeah, this is this is good. This is oh, this is the man. season that we should have had following season one. This is the continuation in which they were alluding to coming into season one, going into the next season. I, I, you know what? If you wanted to have season two happen, I get that, but it almost seems like it almost seems like it should have been like an OVA or something. Exactly. That's what it should have been like an but... OVA. I mean, uh-huh. the two things you could take it apart from season two were the fact that now they're in a bigger house, um, and they have more people with them. Yeah. I mean, that's it. <laughs> and, you know, and and the only person that was not part of the original season one was the Fox Girl. That's it. I. So. I completely forgot that she was like the focal point of season two. Yeah. Cause, because also because we're watching um. Uh, Rim and Ram. What's that show? Uh, oh, ReZero. Yeah, because we're watching ReZero. Mm. In in one of the in. Not Beatrice. What's her? Other, what's her name? There's another, like Fox, maid lady, right? Because her her brother is like inside the village thingy. Oh, she appeared for like one episode, and I don't even remember what if that was the case or not. Yeah. So, so because I because I watched ReZero and then I watched this show, I'm like, oh, she's like that other girl from the other show. She's just a maid that has some backstory, and I completely forgot that she was the focal point of season two until she did something. Like mm-hmm. she did something, and I was like, "Oh, <laughs> that's the girl he rescued." Oh, oh, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I am really liking this one. Uh, 
Uh, oh, one thing that I feel like is we're veering off again. Because when we finished season one, we were talking about the like the Greek guys like Zeus and well, Hermes and all that okay. kind of stuff. So, well, Hermes is there. Hermes is okay. one of the gods we've already talked about. Zeus... Okay. Zeus, we found, was, and I guess spoilers for anybody, but Zeus, we found, was his, um... Grandfather or dad? Grandfather, father, I think. He's the half-son of Zeus, I think. Yeah. Or something in the regards. Anyways, um, no, the main focus was on him. Was on... Why am I blanking on his name right now? God, she says it so many fucking times. <laughs> Why am I blanking on his fucking name right now? <laughs> Bill, God. Yes. Shit. Why is it in that? Anyways, um, the main focus at the end of season one was on Bell saying that there's something going on with the dungeon, and Bell is the hero that. Zeus has the last the last hero is what is what Hermes said. Yeah. Hermes said Bell is the last hero and that he is what's what the what is to come will be a testament for Bell. Bell will be the one to bring them into the new era with how things are changing in the dungeon. Yeah. What about the lady in black? Are you talking about the one who's also been kind of pulling strings and doing stuff? Yeah. That's Aphrodite. And now, she has shown she, up in this this one. No, she has. What is she doing? <laughs> no, she has. Aphrodite has shown up to kind of say the same thing, that she's watching Belle and how he is progressing. And the decisions that he is making on what is happening currently in the world. Okay, so I do, I do think I remember seeing her like she, in the first season she was kind of pulling strings. Yeah. And then this season she's kind of just spectating. She's kind of spectating, yeah. Okay, okay, that makes. At sense. least so far, we don't know. Yeah. I mean, I mean, this season she could, she could end up being more going back to pulling strings for all I know. But, you know, and 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 so far, this. The reason why I said this seems like a direct correlation is because they they hinted about the fact that there is something changing inside the dungeon. Something is, you know, because they made the fact that they made the point of the fact of saying that that one big bad monster that they faced in the first season at the very end shouldn't have been there. It was a safe zone. Yeah. Something changed. Something was changing inside the dungeon. And now, here we are in third season, and we have monsters with the, they're they have cognitive reasoning. Yeah, they're starting to become sentient. They have they have sentient. Yeah, I mean they're starting. They have sentient. They're, they're those monsters that he the ones that he all that he met in that one area. They're all sentient. They all talk. They all feel. They all, you know. Go ahead. I'm. I'm wondering if what if we're gonna see the transformation from like not having like have not having sentience to becoming sentient. I because, don't know. And right there's now, something there's something more behind that too. Yeah, because right now we're seeing either sentient or not sentient. Because and I'm wondering what, like well, what if like it, mid fight like something like happens? Here's here's the other thing too, is that they've made hints that there's something more to this. Because the the one person talked about the fact that there are certain monsters who will understand human speech and are sentient and can actually talk like, you know, Ween was able to do pretty much right off the bat. You know, obviously her speech is very was very broken in the beginning. It's gotten better as time goes on. But it it's been it was very quick. The process yeah. of her being able to speak I mean, like she understood speech right from the get go, and then was able to begin speaking herself within a day or two. Yeah. And then he said, "There are those who can do that, and then there are those who understand speech, 
but can never talk. Mm -hmm. They don't have that capability. And it seems to me, because the fact it seems almost like there was a resurrection that occurred inside the dungeon. Mm -hmm. And I want to say, like, we all know that there are people who, who die in the dungeon. There are adventurers who come in and they die. Oh. is the monsters maybe some sort of resurrection involved in that but i mean they also made the reference to the fact that monsters themselves get resurrected inside the dungeon so it could be the fact that there's monsters themselves after so many resurrections it's like evolution mm -hmm. eventually it's just going to happen Okay. I don't know. Like I said, there's a lot going on, and I'm all about it. I'm all about, I want to know what's happening. I want to know more behind it. You know, they've already... And, and, and the fact, too, is, is that from the episode that, you know, they, they've already made a bad guy, because we know, like, good character, good character Great. development. Yeah. Good character development is when you you know the bad the bad guy is and you're like, okay, I want you you get you get mad at him. You get mad at the bad guy. For whatever reason they may have or whatever it is that they're doing, you get mad at the bad guy. We've never seen this person from this familia until this season happened. The one dude with the, the spear. Uh, it's been the leader of this group of the poachers or hunters or whatever. Oh, yeah. Never seen him before this. I hate his guts. I want him to die. I, I need want to know to I die. need to know what he's doing because every like every second or third scene that you see him, he's just like, ah, stab and something dies. And I'm like, aren't you aren't you capturing those to sell it to somebody? I'm like, See the episode I watched gives more details onto him. Okay. So I, like, I don't I don't want to spoil that for you in that regards. Yeah. But the episode I watched this last from this last Friday explained more of, in detail about him. Come and on, like, up until then it's not making any sense. He's like, no, we can't lose this one. Stab. And I'm like, well, what about <laughs> that one though? <laughs> well, like, I mean, some of them make more money than others. Let's just you know at least part yeah. of it. Regards. Yeah. Um, but I, I will say that, yeah, you know, you, you it, it's one thing to have a character, especially when you're in the third season. Like, if you had a bad guy from the first season who's carried on to all three seasons, it's understandable that by the third season, you really should hate this bad guy. And you really sh should be like, oh, my God, just die already kind of thing. But... This is the very first time we've seen this guy, and I've already wanted him to die. And that goes to show how well they've set up everything before that. Yeah, because you care about specific things a lot. And yeah. if anybody comes in and threatens a piece of that, you're like, no, 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 no. No, you don't know how long we've gotten, how long it's taken us to get here. And yeah. now you're just going to mess it up. Get out of here. Well, and... and I will say the character of Aline has been very, like, the, when after she was introduced and 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 we kind of spent a day in the life of her getting accustomed to being you know out in the world and whatnot, like that whole scene where she ends up scratching Belle on the arm, oh that that broke my heart. Because I thought he, I thought you know, knee jerk reaction, knee jerk reaction. You get hurt, you you feel some sort of way about it. It's a knee jerk reaction for for humans in general. You know, you stub your toe, even though it's your fault. You stub your toe, you're gonna start cursing and swearing about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You have a major wound on that. That out of nowhere, I am very very happy and proud of Bell for handling the situation the way he did. Yeah. He could have handled it so much worse than he did. 
And it would almost been like you'd think, well, yeah, I'd handle it probably in that situation too, because it's a knee jerk reaction. You're in pain. You're not thinking about others' mentality or well being. But he did. And God, if that didn't feel some sort of way about it from from me in that regards, you know, she started crying. I felt bad. I'm like, oh God, oh God. She's just literally seeing here the fact that she wounded the person that she loves so much for helping and rescuing her, and she hurt him. I'm like, oh, man, I feel bad about that. And, it, and you realize it was a complete accident. It was a complete accident. I, I like the way that, like, the whole thing played out, because when... When they were first out there and I saw her claws, I'm like, hey, maybe we should uh, trim them claws. But when I think about it, you can't just bring somebody from the dungeon into the overworld and be like, okay, now we got to cut off your fingertips. Yeah. You, can't, you, get, you have to get them comfortable with you to, and also to trust you and for them to like... When they trimmed her fingernails after the injury, she understands it because of what, what happened. happened. Yeah. And so part of me, in the back of my head, I'm like, we really need to train and change those fingernails. But then the whole situation of them having lunch and all that, and she tasting new food and, like, speaking better and all that kind of stuff, I'm like, this is fun. And then she started hugging on him, and I'm like, ah, oh, she's so cute. And then she's just like, slice. And I'm like, ah! <laughs> I told you, I told you. And then yeah. he's like, he's like, it's fine. And he like grabs her and he's just smiling. And I'm like, ah, oh, Belle. Yeah. Belle, you're such a good man. Yep. <laughs> and, and, and and you know, it's it's everything. This is this is definitely. A, so in the second season, there felt like there was so much that just didn't need to be there. Like we had so much just filler parts or so much parts that didn't necessarily make sense. Oh, this, this, every part is an important part. You know, the fact that he met those monsters, the sentient monsters, and had a conversation with them, ate with them, talked with them, and then at the very end, the lizard guy took him aside and said, look, if you meet monsters out there, not like us, don't hesitate. We kill them too. And he still had that moment when he came back into the dungeon and he had a monster he was facing and he hesitated to kill. Because he, he felt some sort of way about that. But see, knowing Bell, and again, this is season three that we're on now, but knowing Bell, after all these seasons and all these episodes we've watched him for, we all knew. We all knew when it, it, it first got brought up. And But the fact that the lizard guy took him aside, and because he kind of knew too, and was like, look, don't hesitate. If it comes between you and a monster, especially one that's not talking to you, you need to take him down. Don't hesitate. Yeah. But he still hesitated. And we all knew it was going to happen. Yeah. We've known Bell long enough. We're like, oh, he's going to freaking hesitate. And yeah, sure enough, he did. Eventually, he took it down. But he kind of had to fight with himself a little bit in order to come to that realization of himself. And so, I do like the fact that he... Um, he he knew that he had to figure it out for himself yeah. instead of waiting until the next time everybody goes into the dungeon. Yeah. Because he's like, if if I have a problem with this, this could be an issue and it might hurt my party. So yeah. let me let me go off and figure this out for myself. Yeah, let me let me work my way through this and, and come to my own conclusion and be able to to come what where I need to be at. So but again, that's where I said no no part of this was wasted. So far that I've seen, I like Every how part of it has a reasoning. I like how consistent, like everybody's kind of treatment of monsters is, whether mm -hmm. they are main characters or just random villagers, because, like, 
two two scenes come come to my mind where one is when Bell found the girl and like introduced it to his party. Everybody pulled out their weapons and they're like, Bell, what are you doing? And they're just like and like Bell, you are my dude. But you you're you're crossing a line here. And like yeah. everybody like turned for a second. Yeah. And, and it then, literally took Bell standing in front of them and going, No. I yeah. will not let you let you hurt her. Yeah. I, and, and, and you know, and, and if that isn't one of those situations, like you know you know what I see from this now that you said that too? You know what I see from this? That one line from uh Captain America where he says basically, you know, even if the world stands against you, you need to plant your feet for what you know is right and tell the world no, you move. And this is kind of that situation. The whole world is against him in the regards to what he's trying to do. Now, the people in his party kind of, at least to a certain extent, are with him in that regards. But the rest of the world, they're against it when it comes and to these. And it's kind of like you have to be against it because, one, you have no reason to not be against it. And, two, if you're against it, you may die. Yeah. So, um, but, yeah, the other um, the other um, part that, like, kind of hammers in the consistency of, like, everybody – that you know is against monsters, period, unless they know more information, is when um, when they were having that conversation about, uh, I think, weren't people starting to find out that the, um, the that Ren might be at their, like, they're starting to get closer to the, where they, uh, where Bell and them live, so that, so I, I like, I think the, No, the no, look, I, I know, I know what look, you're talking, I know what you're yeah. talking about. No, no, this was where um, Lily was saying to Hestia that they can't keep her anymore and it was going to become an issue um, should they keep her any longer and saying that, you know, we would end up, end up like coming, it would, it would harm Belle or this, that, and the other thing. And when we overheard this, and decided to run away. Yeah. To get to get out of the protection of Hestia and them. And that's when people or no, she saves she saved a girl. That's, yes, that's the exact part where she she saved the girl from that like um that wagon that like all the supplies cult like one of the ropes broke and all the supplies was about to crush that one girl. Yeah. And she ended up saving the girl and like her wings sprouted out. Yeah. And then I don't I don't think anybody saw the girl being saved. No. All they saw was like a big collapse and then a monster next to the girl. And yeah. they immediately started like, get away from there and all that kind of stuff. So. Oh God, that, that part just, I'm like, Oh God damn it. Like that <laughs> whole thing leading up to it. The fact that when the conversation that got overheard, I'm like, no, 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 don't do this. And then, her running across and seeing that girl and that whole situation, I'm like, oh god, because she was doing a fairly decent job of hiding herself and yeah. being inconspicuous. But I knew the minute that that something like that happened, I'm like, here we go, here's the reveal, here's where she's gonna become noticed and and everything. And I'm just like, oh, come on. Okay, and then um, the what's the little girl's name? Lily. Is that, Lily. Is that her? Okay. Did she? She transforms and, and disguises herself, right? Yeah. Okay. So she was the one that was going from like bar to bar, asking questions, looking yeah. like a. Uh, okay. Cause that like con that, I forgot that she could do that. If mm -hmm. she did that the first season, and she did. Uh, well, see, that's the thing. She did it the second season. Oh, uh, okay. She did that the second season, okay. and they they even make reference to that in in that. That she she did that at some point. So yeah, no, she. I guess uh, there are little bits and pieces. I guess in the second season, but I still feel pretty confident in saying that that second season should have just been a freaking OVA. Yeah. So when 
I guess Lily kind of felt, well, it's like, it's like one, Lily felt kind of guilty that, uh, that Reem overheard the conversation, yeah. but then also she was protecting Belle because Belle is widely known and nobody wants Belle to be seen taking care of a monster yeah. because it would cause a lot of trouble. So for, for Lily to like, jump out in front of Belle in a disguise that nobody really knows and to save Green, I was like, that was... That was well, she definitely, and, and I think I think because of that is the fact, like, coming from the get-go, she was against this whole thing. From the yeah. very get-go. And and even when she, even when Ren, uh, Ween was inside the house and everything and they had their, their day and everything, she still was against it. And I think up until the moment when she voiced her opinion to Hestia about how things were going and the fact that it was going to cause trouble and it needed to be dealt with, she still was against it. Mm-hmm. Up until that point. Then I think after we left, and she may have seen the whole thing come come to Coralesque where where Ween ended up saving that girl. Yeah. She may have been one of the few to actually see that. So that being the case... Because, I mean, she was there rather quickly right after that, so she might have been, like, right in that neighborhood right when it happened. So yeah. that being the case, she may have seen that, and I think her opinion of Ween, at least, maybe not necessarily monsters that are talking, but at least Ween, at least, changed. So, it's, it's like, it's character growth. Yeah. It's character growth, and I think this is definitely one of those where other enemies and other forms of media need to pay attention because this is how you do character growth you have a conflict you have things going wrong but you have characters who are making decisions based upon evidence that they're given not just because they all of a sudden have a change of heart or anything like that no they're given evidence they're given things to show that this is the way it is or this is the right way and that then end up turning them into what it is. It, it allows them to progress and grow as a character. Hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah, so this, out of the five, going on six years that we have done this show, this, following a mediocre, should have been an OVA season, this show comes back, and it's one of those shows where Probably at the end, we could deep dive into every single character and like explain how when well when when shows do characters well, like this show has examples of like tons of characters that are done very well, like perfect character development, mm-hmm. like just inspiring journeys of how characters get through certain situations and 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 it's a case of like you want to see more oh yeah like even even with what they've done or even you know they could go off on uh ryu and have like a whole arc with her or something and i wouldn't mind Mm -hmm. because like i want to know about what happened in her past i want to know this whole thing about her previous Familia that she was with that ended up getting wiped out and then she went on like a murder spree killing all those responsible like holy cow like they only gave they only kind of glossed over that detail and they did it in such a way that it made sense because it was her just telling the story by itself so of course she's not going to go into like details about it but shoot I want to see details about it I want to see like what was involved or why or what was the reasoning behind it? Why her family got wiped out or what had ended up happening with that? Like they're alluding to so much and some of it they they give you and some of it they just tease you with. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, it's 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 good storytelling because it's wanting you to watch more. It's wanting you to look at it and be like, I need to know how did this come about? How did this happen? Who's responsible? Why, you know, is is there is she worried about her life after that? Or she thought her life was done after that. Was there going to be somebody who's going to come after her because the fact that she went on a killing spree, killing adventures of another familia, even though her own familia was wiped out? You know, it's just, you know, we've we've gotten some things on Lily, and I appreciate that. 
we've gotten a little bit on wealth. I almost want to see more about wealth too, because of the way he is. You know, there's also questions unanswered with him that I'm like, shoot. And then you know, even even though this whole series is called "Is It Wrong to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon," and it started with Bell having kind of dreamed over eyes, Wallenstein. Yeah. This this so far this third season really hasn't like done much with that. You know, we kind of did a little bit with it. Okay, so we did more of it within season one. We did a little bit with it with season two, but it's like we really haven't touched on that in season three so far. You know, but like so like there's so much more that can be done, and I'm like shoot, and there's only twelve episodes in this season. Yeah, like. The the only time I remember seeing eyes is when he like talked with her for a bit and then they just kind of did yeah. she go somewhere with him or no she 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 parted ways I think he like asked her a question and then she was like well yeah this that was when he was having trouble with deciding whether or not it was right to kill monsters again yeah and then he she asked gave, her in like, regards to that yeah and then she gave an answer and then she kind of like looked at him like well because she, she knew something was up yeah i mean i think she if she's not dumb in that regard she may be soft-spoken and doesn't she's one of those who listens more than speaks yes she observes and 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 kind of is choosy about her interactions i guess and such yeah so and she doesn't like emote much no no she doesn't so like it's there i feel like it's there yeah it's all in the eyes it's in the eyes and 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 she her actions are what speaks more than her her actual like facial expressions and emotions and stuff like that you know because like when you talk about it the fact that like when when bell was leveling himself up in like the first season and it was like after that minotaur fight that they had mm-hmm. and it cut back to um eyes and them and her and her familia going and and going through the the levels of the dungeon and everyone else was fighting and you see the their 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 leader up on the the ridge with eyes and everything discussing the fact that you know one of them was like wow everyone seems to like amped up and they're like well they saw if, they saw a fight with somebody, and, and I think it kind of inspired them. And next thing you know, I just kind of perked up and was like, I got to go. And you're like, <laughs> I somebody may be a little jealous about something in regards to that. I mean, but it's like, again, it's her actions. She didn't like, she only had a brief moment of like, aha. Uh-huh, and then it was like, she, she means like, I got to go. And she immediately start, went and dove into the battle. And you're like, uh, yeah, I, I see what they did. I see what's going on here, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's it's those situations like that. So, but again, even that's her character. Her character is not having a whole lot of character, but being the love interest and a and a strong warrior type for yeah. for Bell, uh, and it, and it works well because it's it's both his love interest and somebody who he aspires to be because of how strong she is. Uh, so they play well off each other. So, I, again, so much of this, I'm like, like you said, we could, you know, once the series is done, we could deep dive into this and go so much into each character and to, into each story thread that they put into it. Yeah, because once this arc is over, I'm like, we are not going to even touch any of the questions that we have about a lot of these characters. Nope. So, yeah, I am. Uh... Yeah, I kind of want to do that because uh, I think I, we did that the last time. A little bit. Uh, it was more. I think for the first season. But I, I think we did. We kind of did, but I think it was more just gushing over the 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 world, the world, and and what it it transpired throughout. It was it was definitely it was a deep dive, but more into just like the overall story arc that kind of progressed as we saw it. But now that we've gone into season three, I mean, we have, we have definitely seen changes in characters mm-hmm. as they've gone through, and I think even more so from than from season one. So, 
But uh, yeah, Dungeon. Everybody should watch it. It is one of the best shows out there. Agreed. All right. The next show we're going to be talking about is Hanyo no Yashahime. Um, <clears throat> the ah. Boruto of Inuyasha. <laughs> yeah, how'd that go for you? Was it about what you expected? Man, <laughs> it brought me back so much. <sighs> So, Inuyasha is one of the very first, like, I'm going to call it, like, real anime that I watched. Um, it is um, it is a show that I watched on Toonami. And, or was it Toonami or was it, like, the later in the... It was uh, the Midnight Run, I think. Mm-hmm. I, I, like, I think I remember watching uh, Inuyasha, like, in the evenings. Um, and this show is probably the, like, Inuyasha is probably the show that got me into Japanese music. Um, it was an engrossing story, and, like, the, the outro kind of had a certain mood that, that, like, matched the show. Mm -hmm. So, normally, instead of, um the show playing out and then all of a sudden it's like well that's over da, 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 the end of the episode and i'm like <laughs> it just completely throws you off but this one like it sucked me in it was um like a really really nice song i think it was by dream um they had like a ferris wheel and a red rose and like i don't know like inuyasha as a show is like very big in my anime history mm-hmm. so when i go i mean it's it's one of the it's one of the if you were to it's one of the og greats i think if yes. you were to ever discuss anime with somebody who's been watching it for you know years and years i mean they would probably it, it, it ranks right up there with like um shows like um oh god i just my, my, i had him in my mind and i was blinked on him what the hell? Tenchi, Sailor uh, Yeah, Tenchi, Sailor Moon, um, Dragon Ball. I mean, those were all the big names at the time. But this would be like the equivalent to... I mean, I guess in a really sense, it's Naruto. Because it's, 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 it's more like everyone knows of it. Yeah. So... You know, if you were ever to discuss anime and see someone who barely even watched anime would know this anime just because it's the name that just got passed around so much when it came to anime, just like Dragon Ball and Sailor Moon and all the rest of them. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, (laughs) watching this show, it like, man, it took me back. Um... So basically, this is in the first. I've only seen the first episode, and mm-hmm. the weirdest thing about it is that this the first episode doesn't even take place with the main the, the new characters that much. Was it just a rehash? It was. It was kind of like here's a new situation that we're in. One of uh, the the silver hair girl got. Um, captured and brought before like a um like a em- not emperor like one of the one of the leaders and like um his um his, not assistant like the guy that's like it's second in command that like get relays information to the emperor i'm just saying all the wrong terms so this uh yeah so basically the, the second in command that like, relays all the information to the emperor he uh, brought in um, the silver-haired one. Okay. I don't know their names yet. <laughs> and um, they... You're talking about the silver-haired one that's on the... Yeah. Toa. Toa? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he, br- he brought in Toa, and she... Um, it's... She doesn't know that they know information about the world. Mm-hmm. So, she got captured, and then they brought out um, 
they brought out this uh, rusty bike seat. And they're basically like, do you know anything about this? And me, I'm like, hey, is that Kagome's bike seat? <laughs> and she basically gives some vague information because she knows what that seat is, but she doesn't know that they also know about it. So she just says something and then attendant? Is it his attendant? Like he yeah. basically goes into like a flashback or like a history lesson and it's basically an episode of Naruto with like there's um there's this uh this one monster that um is a ball of hair and mm. it gets or and it's mixed with roots or something like that and it basically decapitates people and takes their skull to like mm. to gain power and it just happened to come across this battlefield so it ended up just grabbing all these skulls from all these people who died in that battle <coughs> and um so it spreads across the the land and um, starts springing up whenever it finds somebody who's vulnerable who, get, who it can attack. Um, Inuyasha and the gang, they get wind of it and like they start um, basically attacking it in spots that it's um, causing trouble. Mm -hmm. And eventually uh, Inuyasha and Kagome find like the piece of it that leads to the root. And once they start um, attacking that, then all, the whole gang shows up and then they end up defeating the root. Um, and then it, go, it goes back, like after that story over, it goes back to Toa being um, interrogated by those two guys and then um, her two friends, or are they cousins? Like, they may be cousins or something? I don't know if they're all related, all three girls. But the two mm -hmm. twins come bust in the house rescue the other girl and then they all flee um but yeah that's like the format of the first episode one thing that i really 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 like is the styles of monsters haven't changed because in the first episode there was a um there was this lady that controlled hair mm -hmm. I think she like came from a cursed comb or something like that. Like, like comb that was used to chrome the hair of the dead or something like that. And the um, basically the root of that monster was this gigantic ball of hair and it had skulls and stuff hanging from it. And this new monster looked just like that monster. Like, and, <laughs> like art style and everything. So it's mm -hmm. like it may it may be very very happy. So, what's gonna happen with this show for me is that it's gonna fall to the wayside because I don't want to watch any more of this without finishing Inuyasha. Inuyasha <laughs> is a hundred and sixty-seven episodes. I was about to look that up too, and I was like, "How many episodes is that?" Oh, good lord, dude! I've seen ninety of them many, many, many years ago. So, yeah, I, kinda, so, I have to start over. I was about to say. Yeah, so there's Inuyasha, the 167. Then there's Inuyasha Final Act, which is um, another 26, I think. And then there's Yasha Hime, which is this one. And one thing that I hope that's different is, unlike Boruto, I hope that I don't feel like I'm babysitting. With Boruto, all of my favorite characters... I've talked about this many, many times before. But um, uh, Hinata, Naruto's now wife. Spoilers if nobody knows that already. Um, she was my favorite character. And now she's a mom. And she tells her kids to like do their homework and make sure they finish eating dinner. And I don't see her fight. She may fight later on in the series. But at the very beginning of Boruto... She's just washing dishes and, and talking to the kids. And I'm like, you've changed. <laughs> and of course, yes, she's changed. She's a, she's a mother now. She's grown up. But for me watching the show, like a lot of all the characters that I loved from back in the day, from what I've seen at the beginning of the series, they're not doing that anymore. And I feel like I'm still the same. And they're not the same anymore. So I lost interest in watching Porter Club. 
see, that's that. I can't, I can't fault you for that. Because that's the same reason I stopped watching Naruto. Kind of. Mm -hmm. The fact that you have a character who had been built up for this entire, you know, whatever, however many episodes was the big bad main villain, and everyone was like, "Oh my God, they, we can't kill him!" And he killed multiple, multiple important people. And then gets easily dispatched by Sasuke at one point. And you're just like, oh, ah, yeah. yeah. What the hell just happened? <laughs> like, that just killed it for me. And everyone's like, but he comes back. And I'm like, I don't care. I, I, now I'm going to look at him and like, you're a little bitch. <laughs> I can't take you seriously anymore. You got killed so easily by somebody who you look down upon and think beneath you, and yet you've tried. Yet yeah, you're a little bitch. Go away. Yeah. So, no, I completely <laughs> agree. But to me, I'm like, yeah, you changed. I don't know what yeah. the fuck happened, but you changed. <laughs> so yeah, um, I hope that this show, like, is its own entity in the same world. Yeah. Because. Yeah, I don't know. They seem older than, like, the Boruto kids. So, um, I hope that it's different. Even though, what I, it is weird, because, like, the only thing that I've seen from this new series is basically an episode of the old series. <laughs> so, I'm like, yeah! Get him real good! He's like, oh, I wish I had the wind tunnel. And I'm like, what happened to the wind tunnel? That was, like, the whole thing. It was gonna, it was gonna swallow you whole, and now it's gone? What? I didn't even watch the first series, so I can figure out what happened to the wind tunnel. So, um, yeah. Oh, and then, like, his brother sh 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 Shomaru shows up. Mm -hmm. He doesn't do much. He's just kind of like, I'm here. And then he, like, floats off. <laughs> and that dude's like, wait for me! And I'm like, oh, yeah, he's always, like, running off and he's chasing him. So, <laughs> so I'm like, ah, it just brought me back. Um, I don't... If you like Inuyasha, watch the first episode. I don't know the rest of it, but uh, yeah, I love this world. I love the, the old characters. Um, I have high hopes for this new one, but I don't feel like I've seen anything from this story yet because it was kind of like a welcome back kind of episode. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. My Inuyasha's world. The next episode we're gonna be talking. Uh, next show we're gonna be talking about is Higurashi. Ah, uh, yeah. This so, is... how much of this have you seen? Um, I, I, I've so far I've held off on watching this one. So far, okay. I, 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 I feel like this is one that I, I want to dive into more um when there's more of it yeah okay this is definitely one that that that, that i know is going to be cliffhangery i know is going to be cliffhangery and i'm going to hate myself <laughs> like i watch because you know what part you want to stop at you're like okay, i've, I'll, I've, I'll, I'll I've watch watched most part. of the other yeah i've watched most of the other see i know what we're in for I know how this is going to play out, for the most part. Um, I just been like, you know what? I'll hold off on that one. I'll, I'll take my time and and we'll see where this is going to go, kind of thing. So. So. How do I want to approach this? Because I'm not sure how much of the original from 2006 you remember. It's it's. And it's like I know, I know the, the the setup, and I know bits and pieces of how things progressed. Like okay. the beginning, I'm I'm more familiar with. Um, and then everything else after that just becomes, I guess the best way to say it is one big bloody mess. <laughs> yeah. uh, but yeah it's definitely one that I wanted I want I, I I knew okay so I knew I wanted to have more of the episodes in front of me
before I started to dive into. And I thought that maybe going back and looking at some of this might be a better refresher than trying to dive into the new one right off the bat, too. Yeah, so I'm all over the place on this show. Um, um, so I watched the first episode of the new one. And then I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is a remake. It's going to be a wild ride. Oh, yeah, no. It is going to be a wild ride. I'm like, it's going to take me back to some terrible memories. <laughs> and then it'll be over. Um, but I didn't, I don't know. It's like... See, I, I, I think... So, because of the way they set it up, if you don't, if you come into it fresh, having no previous experience with the re the previous season, coming into this fresh, it would just be mind blown. You have to watch the next episode and see what the hell happens, because it just it takes you so off guard. You know, it's like um, school life. Yeah. I'm not going to spoil anything for those who haven't watched that because you need to watch that. Anyone else out there, just watch the first episode and 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 let me know what you think. But it's 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 after having watched that first episode that you become hooked. You won't think you're going to become hooked. You don't know you're going to become hooked. But it's after watching that first episode that you're just like, I've got to find out what the hell's going on or what happened. It's the same with this. But once that realization passes, and once the understanding of it starts to coalesce, going back into this now from the previous having known that, you're not as nearly as like riveted and, oh, I got to see what happens next kind of thing. Yeah. You know, the, 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 the shiny wrapping on the outside has has been taken off for you. The surprise is no longer there, and you're more like, well, I know what I know what we're in for. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's not going to have the same draw for you as it would for somebody who's going into this blind. Yeah. There will be, if you watch the original back, I guess, when it aired or shortly after it aired, and then you haven't touched it again, because why, it's like, why would I put myself through that again? Until now, it is getting, you're like, oh, okay, this happened before that, that happened after this, and then I forgot about A, B, C, and D. Mm -hmm. And then maybe seeing those parts, you're like, oh! That answers questions that you had back in the day, yeah. because you didn't, you didn't need to, you didn't know you needed to know that part, or you didn't yep. see it the last time. Yeah. So rewatching it, it's really cool because you find new little nuggets or come across nuggets that were cool back in the day. Yeah. My issue with this, and I don't know how to approach this show anymore is it's like a 1 to 0.95 remake where the same exact stuff happens in the first episode mm -hmm. across both series mm -hmm. and they may be doing a brotherhood with it where they cut out filler and they make what's supposed to be there a bit more detailed. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like new Rika. Okay. And I don't know if I like the execution of this newer one. Um, so I'm trying to figure out like how to put it to where it doesn't like 
have you looking for what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, I don't know, kind of like take like ruins your enjoyment of the show. So, um, yeah. like I said, I mean, this was definitely one that I I said to myself, and I said from the very beginning, I'm I'm definitely of the mind and and of the because I know how a lot of this plays out and maybe not like specific details in a lot of ways but I know how a lot of it plays out and I know the shock value in regards to that what's funny to me is is that there was that whole incident with Goblin Slayer where things went after the first episode people went absolutely Bat shit crazy because of certain details that happened in that one. Yeah. And now I look at this one and I know, I know the bat shit crazy shit that happens in this. <laughs> You're like, uh, I'm we're already, to take this. <laughs> we're already at episode seven. And what makes me kind of laugh is I haven't heard an outcry about this at all and I'm like if you guys got upset about what happened in the first episode of Goblin Slayer and you're not getting upset about the shit that happens in here and I know oh my how bad and graphical this one really is I'm like where does that this really makes this more of like almost like a social experiment where it's like how how are we defining what's bad and what's not anymore because oh my this is just to me so much worse than anything that could have happened in in common slayer but here we are and people are just accepting it and i'm just like I don't know. Maybe there's not as much popularity. Maybe there's something else is is there's another factor I'm not looking into here. But it, it just yeah. I I expected so much more when this came out because of how how long of a gap this the original came out for this versus where we're at now. And I'm thinking how many generations grew up not having watched the original and to now be able to see it. Even if it's a remake, I mean, now they're able to really see it. I'm like, this is messed up. Where, yeah. are we, how are we accepting of this kind of thing? I'm curious if it was a new IP, like, what would it just completely fall in between the cracks, or would people be like, because I don't know, it's like. The very opening, the first scene, the very opening scene will sh- shock you. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then the rest of the episode plays out and you're like, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I don't know what a 2020 audience or like what, how, how it'll take it. Um, one thing is it's like I'm 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 torn. So I don't I don't like the execution of the new one compared to the old one. But the animation of the new one blows away the old one. Mm-hmm. And then the fact that there are parts in the old one that I could consider filler that are stripped from the new one. Mm-hmm. But character development is not in the new one. So one thing that I Or at least at least so far. I mean you've only you've only watched the first episode, right? Well, okay, so I feel like the new one is missing so many different things. I don't mm-hmm. know who's directing it, but I feel like it's either not the same person or it's kinda like a Star Wars uh, prequels kind of, like kind of thing where it is the same person but they've like evolved in their career and they're like nah I don't want to do it like I did it back in 2006 I want to do it this way and I hate the new way mm-hmm. so um, basically the new one I feel like I got thrown in 
to a bunch of stuff happening. And because I don't remember the old one, I'm like, oh, yeah, the school was set up this way. Oh, yeah. This person isn't here. Oh, yeah, this is that. If you didn't know that, I'm like, one, I'm paying attention to stuff that's not there because I know what's coming. Mm -hmm. But for somebody going in, like, fresh, like, one thing that I, um, there was a show, uh, I think we had mentioned, uh, movies, um, like the Transformer movies. Um, over time, I feel like the Transformer movies became mean-spirited, like, like, pick, like, joking and picking on each other is, can be cool for if you execute it in a certain way. Or it could just be a show full of jerks. Like, I feel like this show, they're exec they're not executing it properly. And like the little blonde haired girl, she's a jerk, mm -hmm. in my opinion. But in the original, I feel like two of the characters are just fighting each other all the time because that's what they do. That's what they're they're playing back and forth. And mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of that's missing. So what I now, would do is was is that is that because uh, now here's an interesting question about that is that because that's the way you're perceiving it now, or is it because because of the time lapse in between when the original came out that you watched and this one, you've changed in your opinion of something. So what I did is I watched the ep first episode of the new one, mm -hmm. and then I went and grabbed my Blu-ray and popped in the first episode of the old one, and then my my thing was all acting. Uh, it was, um, like, I there was so much to do. that I was like, is it available for streaming? So then I found it on High Dive. Mm -hmm. So if possible, I would like for you to watch the first episode of the new one, mm -hmm. and then watch the first episode of the, um, of the old one, and then continue with just the new one. Or when you get to that point, like, we can have, like, an offline conversation so I can, like, figure out how we want to like do this show because I feel like the execution is completely different. Like one mm -hmm. thing that I miss from the old one, like I, I just watched it like earlier today and I'm like, why didn't they do that in the new one? Is Keiji, the main guy, he narrates mm -hmm. the beginning. He's like, I moved to this town. This is how the school's set up. I help my two friends so and so and so and so because the teacher can't help everybody. I, um, these two characters are so and so. They live in a certain place. And then every time the girls pick on him, he like has a reaction. Mm -hmm. Like, it all seems like everybody's friends. And the reason why I know that is because he explained that they're all friends and they mm -hmm. all like have crazy banter. There's also a card game that they play in the first episode that also shows like how close they are. And it's not in the second, it's not in the new one. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I, one thing I want to know is, are they going to do a brotherhood where they strip out all the filter and flesh out the rest of the story? Or are they cutting out the filler because that never happened and this first season is not even going to be the same as the old one because they're going to like go like three episodes in and veer off like like brotherhood did mm -hmm. so i have no i i have no idea how to approach this one because the way I feel about the first episode, I don't know if I'm just going to be sitting there and hating the whole series. Like, <laughs> why Man, did it you wasn't, cut it that wasn't out? Like, it wasn't like it used to be, man. Yeah. yeah it, it, it used it's to be not great. Not that mean now. Mm. Like, also, do you remember that um, whenever something was happening, I the uh, I, people's changed? Mm -hmm. I didn't either. I either the way they executed it, I didn't notice it. Or it doesn't happen. I can't remember, but like no, I I saw I saw little little bits and pieces. Just even watching that preview, just real quick, I saw where that happened. Okay, okay. Then there's <clears throat> there's like in the first episode where they deny, like he asks a question and they deny it. I I I don't like the way the new one did it compared to the old one. Like I, I really would like because it's it, like it's available on streaming. 
And if we can get you to, uh, to like, just to do those two on the high dive, I, I'm kind of curious on your opinion because well, I don't know how I feel about it. I, I love the original, and mm-hmm. I want to, I really want to like the new one. Like, the food. Like, they had a picnic in the first episode. The food looks so good in the new one. I was like, oh, my God. And then I watched the old one, and I'm like, kind of want the food for the new one. <laughs> oh, like, and like, even like, they like fought over hamburgers and the way that they e- executed was like completely different. And I'm like, ah, uh, I don't know. I kind of wish I didn't watch the old one. Mm. Well, I will say, give me on high dive and I'll go for it. I'll see what I can, I'll, I'll, I'll take, I'll take a look at it. Okay. But, um, there. I do think it's funny that I, I mentioned school live um as a kind of a similarity in certain ways to this one uh-huh. and going on to any chart they're under their recommendations it's school live <laughs> yep. like go um, figure so yeah i don't i don't know if i'm like, no. <laughs> like i'll say then it. we'll leave it at this um, I'll go ahead and give me on to high dive and I'll, I'll take a look at it on the first episode and I'll compare the two and who knows, maybe I'll, I'll watch both and just kind of go back and forth and just kind of see. That would watch. be interesting. If one we, episode like, on this and then one, one episode on this and one episode on this and one episode on this and, and see how well they, they coalesce or if there is like some pretty significant changes involved. Yeah, that's interesting. And it's like, there's three seasons, well, two, and like a, sh- I think the third one's short. Yeah. But, um. Well, I'll stick to at least the one that they have for right now, is, is what, what, they're, what they're redoing. Yeah, yeah, I'm just, I'm just kind of expanding on, like, the whole story, because I'm like, what if they just, what if the reason why they're cutting out the filler is because they condensed seasons one and two into one thing? Mm. We'll see. If it seems like they go off track and and they're they're trying to add in more to it, I'll um I'll I'll continue on with maybe like season two and just to see if elements of season two are being made into the first season of the new one. We'll yeah. see. Okay. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I'll, I have, yeah, I'll I'll watch them in parallel too, and I'll write down notes because I, I like. I'll have my task set in front of me then. I'll 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 see what we can do about that. So, give me hooked up to it, and we'll go from there. <laughs> All right, the next show we'll be talking about. Yeah, this was kind of left on a on a cliffhanger. Like, this, thing, is, one, this is a to be returned to. Yeah, because one thing I I did also want to say about this one is I recommended this show, like, to um, to someone, and I was like, this this is a good show, and I'm like I I regret that recommendation because I want to I want to recommend the old one. <laughs> Well, uh, well, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. So it's like, we'll but then the old one, the animation might be too dated for him. So I'm like, oh, uh-huh. I don't know where to go. But yeah, I'm just, I'm so all over the place on this show. But we'll be back. <laughs> the next show we'll be talking about is Ikebukuro Westgate Park. So, um, wait, well, yeah, I thought this is one you haven't watched yet, list. Oh, oh, I didn't put in a new one. Sorry. I, I watched like five more and I and I didn't update them. <laughs> I was like, wait, I thought this was on your not watch list. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> so yeah, this little show's been delayed by two weeks and like after the first week. Oh, I see. When it, when we were supposed to no. Yeah, when yeah, the show yeah, yeah, was yeah. supposed okay. to happen, I wasn't ready. And then we delayed it a week and I got halfway ready. And then now that we're recording, I've watched more. So yeah, gotcha. it's yeah, it's so um so yeah, I did get to this one and I thought it was gonna be like the old show. But the only thing that's like the old show is like certain the like the live action drama that I watched like ten years ago. Uh, mm. it's weird that like shows from like ten years ago are just all of a sudden getting remade in the anime and stuff like that. Um but the character names are the same. And just about everything else is different. So, um, the guy, Makoto, one of the main characters, mm-hmm. 
he is the guy who I, I keep bringing up has like the uh, the QP mayonnaise that he always keeps in his pants, and um, he all puts that on everything that he eats. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. He does, hasn't done that yet, or he doesn't do that. <laughs> I kind of wish that he did. So but, basically, everything that you were looking forward to in regards to this anime, they've just ditched. I think so. I barely remember like what happens in that old show. I do know that there's a game called G Boys. It's kind of like Dollars from um from Durarara. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the whole show is about. <laughs> like i guess vigilante justice where it's like there's certain situations that are happening in the city that mm-hmm. the cops can't deal with because the people because you have to fight fire with fire and the cops are held to such a high standard that they can't fight with fire mm-hmm. but these char- the main characters in the shows are not held to that standard so they can fight fire with fire to help the police solve situations. You know, it's funny. Here again, I was just looking at the, the trailer for it just kind of as you were talking, just kind of get some idea. Um, on the recommendations for this anime, the very first recommendation on the anime list for this thing. Do ra 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 ra. <laughs> Uh, it does. It feels like we're in some kind of world where stuff like that is happening. Oh, and then also Gangsta's there, too. I think you remember watching that one, too. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think if you mixed do and Gangsta, you would come up with something close to this. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's interesting. Like, I really like the characters. Um, there's there's, it's, it's one of those realistic shows where it's like, the characters may not look super realistic. They look more like everybody's from a boy band mm-hmm. or a girl group. But everything else seems like real, like believable. Like er, all of this stuff could happen in real life. And um, yeah, I really, really like it. Like there's this one first episode, you end up coming across this um, a situation where Something happened to um, this girl's mom, and she tries to take things into her whole her own hands by mm-hmm. burning down a building. Because um, like they, response, yeah, because like it's basically um, everything's like a lot of um, like shady activity, like selling drugs and like gang activity and stuff like that. And basically, the people who work in this building did something that caused an accident that caused her mom to go to the hospital and in retaliation because she can't because she can't fight against them she wanted to burn the whole building down because she knew that the building had drugs in it um and when makoto takes her because no they the people in that building don't know him he basically wants to go in and like do reconnaissance and like find out information so they can solve the problem and when he takes her into the building she sees that there's other people in the building other than the drug dealers. And she was like, he's like, and if you would have burnt this building down, you would have killed all these other people. And he's like kind of teaching her a lesson. Mm -hmm. And that reminds me of like the drama, because even though you're dealing with like cop, like illegal things like drugs and dealing with the cops and fights and on gangs and all that kind of stuff. Every episode also had a lesson in it. So for mm-hmm. for them to kind of put that in there too, I was like, ah, I, it, it just feels like the old show. So uh, even though completely different things are happening, gotcha. So I I really really do like this show. Um, gotcha. Yeah. So uh, we are halfway through. Did you want to take a break? Yes, let's take a quick break. Yeah. So this is a new thing that we're doing in this show because. I feel like we should have done this years ago. But um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we'll be uh, taking a what, couple minute break. We'll be back right after four. And uh, yeah, we will see you then.
And we are back. Right? <laughs> yes. Okay. The next <laughs> show we'll be talking about is Iwakakuru Sports Climbing Girls. Why? <laughs> why? Why? Why did you watch this one? This is one uh, that did not make the cut for last week. And I was like, I, I'll just skip it. I don't have enough time. And then with a week of time added, so I was like, yeah, I really wanted to watch it, but <laughs> I got time now, so I'm going to watch it. So, uh... <coughs> <laughs> This is one of those learning about a sport shows. Um, it is about rock climbing and the indoors type of rock climbing, even though they show this girl climbing a mountain. Um, they may climb mountains later, I don't know. But in the first episode, you follow her. She is new to a high school and doesn't know what um, what club that she's going to join. And she's just walking around and she walks into this one little area and like this one girl's like taking off the drape of this uh, rock climbing wall. And uh, she's like, whoa. And then the girl's like, well, you want to try? And you can tell that this girl is like jaded because she'd rather be climbing the rock wall and like perfecting her skills instead of talking to people who either don't care or are trying it just to be nice. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, she wasn't expecting to come across this girl because this girl, she used to be a gamer. And the gamer of the puzzle variety. Mm -hmm. And she, uh, <laughs> this is one of the shows that gave me and Ray Ray, like, one of those laugh till you're excited, like, till you can't, till you're crying laughs. <laughs> um, so basically, the, um, the girl starts to, uh, the, the girl on the team, on the, on the in the club, starts telling the new girl about the um, about what it actually is because this girl's never seen a rock climbing wall, mm -hmm. and she's like, "Oh, okay. she's like, you want to try?" So she starts, um, she starts trying, and she just happens to be better than the average person. So she starts like getting on different things, and like um, she actually starts progressing, and then she gets to a part where you're supposed to like jump to it, and um, the girl on the ground is kind of standing there just judging her and she's like ah, yeah she's never going to make that and then she actually like starts lunging and getting ready to jump and she's like oh she's actually going to try it and <laughs> she jumps and then just wham hits the ground hard completely <laughs> <laughs> misses and me and Ray were on the couch dying falling off the couch I'm like, isn't she supposed to be wearing a harness or some kind of protection? I'm like, I yeah, the ground, like there's a a mat on the ground that's padded, but oh yeah, but you hit that, you hit that hard, you you're gonna knock the wind right out of you. <laughs> I was another one. Was so funny. <laughs> She's like, ah, poof. I mean, did they do like a comical, like midair, just like pause, or did they just immediately just go like, whoosh? It was perfect editing. She like lunged down a little bit, reached for it, cut to her falling and hitting the ground. Yes. It was glorious. Um, so after me and Mary stopped like <laughs> laughing and wiping tears from our eyes, um, the girls like. Yeah, that's an that's an advanced move. Of course you're not gonna make it. And I'm like, that's what you're worried about? This girl injured herself, and you're gonna be like, uh, duh, you can't do that. And I'm like, I hate this girl. <laughs> but then um, the new girl kind of sits and like stares at the wall, 
And then all of a sudden starts doing this weird calculation where it's, and it's not like, um, like numbers start flying across the screen. Mm-hmm. It's more like all these bubbles show up, kind of like bubble bobble. Mm-hmm. And she starts tracing the path of the same color to a certain, like, a certain hold. And, like, she's like, okay. And it, it's weird. It's like the mobile game way to figure out a puzzle. And it is like, pop, pop. And I'm like, Oh, I hate this. I hope she doesn't do this every time. And she... <laughs> so as she like figures out the next way to approach it, all of a sudden she's like, all right, I have figured it out. Let me try it again. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. What just happened? Did she hit her head? Because she sounds like a robot right now. And her eyes are all like sparkly because she's just like pumped. And I'm like, uh, what is What's happening all of a sudden? This is weird. Um, so then she jump, uh, she tries it again. She gets a little bit higher. And like the two um, senpais, the older um, people who've been in there, uh, the been on the team. It's not a team. It's only like two people. And now it's four. But other people in the club, they, um, they, uh, I guess, they get there and, um, start talking and the one girl is like yeah I really like they're like oh are you interested in joining the club she's like yeah I really really like it it's like a game and then the other girl's like <laughs> she, she gets all pissed off again it's not a game Regular. I'm like God. she doesn't okay. say like that's what it feels like to me because all of us like first she's like oh duh of course you can't do that because it's an advanced technique and then she's like rock climbing is not a game I'm like calm down Jesus I'm like you just joined this club. You, how, you what? Been in this club a couple days, and now you're like yelling at this new girl who's never rock climbed before, and you know, like rock climbing is not a game. And I'm like, okay, I really don't like her now. But um, the other two girls, they're like, oh, okay, I get it. I see how you're like, yeah, you, know, you think it's like a game, you figure out like a puzzle. And um, so the other girls like, no, I challenge you to a race. If you lose, you quit. And, I'm, and she's like, I've never rock climbed before. How am I going to win against you? And she's like, no. So they, they're like, okay, well, I guess we'll do this competition tomorrow. So like, they come the next day. The, um, the, sim, like, the oldest um, member of the club has like, set up two identical walls, mm-hmm. which um, I guess I learned something. Um all of those walls, they have, I guess, not drill holes, the mounting holes that are like laid out a certain way. And then those little pegs, you could just move it anywhere you want to. And just, just. so I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. So she's up, she set up two different, um, two different, uh, two identical walls and set up the race. Um, they started the race. Of course, the the experienced new member uh, just starts flying up the uh, up the wall. Oh no! They gave her a handicap. She said, um, <laughs> "They're like, all right." And they cut to the new the new day before they started racing, and one of them is wearing a blindfold. And I'm like, "She has to climb with a blindfold on? What kind of handicap is this?" <laughs> <laughs> what it is is they're giving her a two minute start. And the other girl can't look at the wall to plan. Mm-hmm. Like, as soon as the two minutes is up, now, blindfold off, go. So, uh, so I'm like, oh, okay, that makes more sense. Because then she's going to be like, where is it? <laughs> 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 oh, I think I got it. Just fall off the wall. So, <laughs> um, so the other girl's like, slowly, like, making her way up. And um, then... The other girl just hops to it and just starts sprinting up the wall. Um, the wall's set up to where it's a fork. Um, the left side has easier holds, but then there's a gap. And then the right side has more awkward holds, but there's no gap. So being a newbie, the uh, other girl goes for the easier holds because the other girl's gaining on her. And then 
when she gets to the gap, she's like, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. But then she has that little puzzle game vision again. And she starts grabbing on the side of the wall. And me, I'm like, hey, that's cheating. You know, you're only supposed to hold the color peg things, right? I was like, you can't. Did I just climb the whole side of the wall? Like, what? I don't get it. And then they're like, oh, she's she's using so-and-so technique. I'm like, oh, that's allowed? <laughs> okay. How did she know that that's allowed? She okay. <laughs> I was like, okay, whatever. So then the other girl, she's like slowing down because she's on all these weird, like, awkward uh, peg holes. And then... They both get up there and almost tie. The more experienced one got there like a fraction of a second before. Mm -hmm. And um, then when they get back down to the bottom, and she's like, yeah, so she won. And she's like, all right, well, it was fun. Um, I guess I'll go down. And the other girl's like, no. this I, Next time, I'm going to beat you with a bigger margin. And she's like, oh, I can stay on the club. And he's like, yeah. So I'm like, okay, so it's Goku and Vegeta now. <laughs> uh -oh. They're going to have this weird rivalry where one's the purest and then the other one is just like, let's try it and figure stuff out and just magically has this power to be able to do everything. Um, so it's interesting. I learned a few different things about rock climbing. And... Um, one thing that happened at the beginning of the episode was weird. Um, I didn't remember the picture, so I wasn't sure what the art style was going to be. Mm. But then they showed this lady in this like sports outfit, and I'm like, that looks like an Olympic outfit. And she's just built. And not like Hulk muscular, but like built to rock climb. So mm. like... Um, and like built like a basketball player, where it's like you you're you can maneuver and like you're strong. And she's like on this one part and she can't reach the next one. So she like jumps off and then like sits down and looks at like looks at it like she's gonna approach it a different way and like has her hand in this uh bucket of chalk and then she's like, all right, and then like gets up and then just like just run, like a basketball player just starts running into the ha, 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 ha. And I'm like, whoa! I'm like, is this what this show is gonna be like? I'm like, who made this? Did Production IG make this? And then like it cuts to like anime girls. And I'm like, where's the other like actually <laughs> what the, like why did they show that other person? Like, like why did they show this realistic person? And then the show's going to be about completely different anime girls. But in her doing that, I'm like, oh, this is like a legit... Like, all the rock climbing that I see is either somebody hanging off of a mountain where it's like a 60 degree upside down and they're just like hanging on by their fingertips in real life that I'm like, I will never do that. Or like at some kind of like parking pizza place where they got a little rock climbing wall. I've never seen like sports climbing mm -hmm. where they're like, okay, this event is the speed climbing where like it's easier than like ones that have more difficulty and the actual holds are set up to where you can grab it quickly and like go. So it's like running up a wall like Spider-Man kind of event. So I'm like, okay. So I've learned a few different things about rock climbing. And if I were to finish the show, I feel like I would learn a lot more. But I've had my fun with this show. <laughs> so you're not going to continue it? Oh. <laughs> so now, if it was a bunch of girls, like if it was a bunch of like female athletes like that first one that I saw, and it was like, an animated version of an actual event at the, some kind of Olympics or something like that. 
then I would be way more into watching it because that I'd feel like I'd be watching uh Kudakos basketball but climbing walls instead. So um it's very interesting. Like man, if I had more time I would definitely I'm glad that I like had an extra week to like sneak in a couple shows because this is this is the whole reason why I like sports anime. It's like if it's a sport that I know barely anything about, I learn stuff. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I have, yeah, I don't know. It's like the only thing that I could think of for this show is they will basically like go through the circuit. There's like, we, this is the high school circuit. You go through these different events and you go through these different things. And if you want to turn pro, then this is what you would do. And I was like, just learn about a whole new world that I had no idea about. Mm. I'm like, speed rock. What? I did not even know. Now, I was wondering why I was like, sports climbing girls. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> but um, yeah. It was, a, it was a fun first episode. All right. The next show we're talking about is Jujutsu Kaisen. Did you happen to watch this one? Yes. This is probably one of my top tier for the season. I would say. It, it, it's just, it is. Uh, did you just watch the first episode? Okay. The finger. It is just I'm not... so good. Well, uh, yeah. Here. Why? Yeah, it is. It is just so good. Um, and honestly, I think they they this was the perfect time for this anime to come out too. Like it just it feels it feels right. Um, the fact that it came out in October, I think, was a good time for it because I think that probably gave it an extra little push uh, for people to be interested in watching it and. Oh, God, it's just the characters in it. Um, the main character is is pretty bland. I will say he's not what I would say is he has not as much character development as I would think a main character would have. He's a strong man. He's just he's just he's strong. He has a great deal of willpower. I will say that. Um, but. I mean, at the end of the day, he's just, he's strong. He's goofy in, in a lot of ways. Um, goofy but, kind uh, of like empty-headed kind of way, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say the other two characters that are with him, um, which are... I'm uh, mad at them. Why? So, they're in the occult club. Uh huh. How do you not know about curses in a occult club? Because it's just for a fun thing. I feel like they 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 say they're in a cult club, but really they barely do anything really like occult ish. I mean, they were the very beginning. They were playing with a Ouija board and geeking out over. Um, oh, it moved! It moved! Oh, did you move it? Oh, it, oh, it's so much fun! Yeah, it's just they're they're. So they, they're not they, actually fans of the occult. They just know of the occult, and they, they like are doing that just so they can get a club credit. They were probably more like, to me, it felt like they were more like, um, like a movie occult, like your stereotypical occult. Okay. Like curses seemed very much like you probably like everyone knows like anyone knows of the actual term curse, but what it actually entails, what this show has evolved it into I think is way more than um, what you would normally look into it as. So basically like if they were actual true fans of the occult as far as like curses and stuff like that goes, they would either be in charge of a temple, kind of like in the picture, or they would be like, like that other guy, like it would be in the family kind of thing. Yeah, I would imagine. Okay. I would look at that. 
to me, they're more just like movie fans and just geeking out and just having fun, doing whatever kind of thing. Okay. You know, they're they're the ones who stand in front of a, in the mirror in the bathroom and say Bloody Mary three times. <laughs> And and then freak out because someone starts flicking the lights on and off or something like that. You you know what I mean? That's that is the extent of the quote unquote occult that it, that they're they're with is what I feel like. Okay, because I'm used to like an occult club actually being competent. Yeah. Like, no, I I do not see them being competent. In <laughs> fact, after the first episode. I feel like they're gonna quit the occult club. <laughs> well, no, no. Like after the first, after the first episode, well, I think there's a little bit in the second episode with them, but that's it. We don't see them anymore. Okay. We're, so we're I think, I think like if if something like that happened in real life, somebody's like, "Oh, we're in the occult club. And we found something spooky, and then something actually like terrible happened." I feel like they would just quit the occult club like the next. Ba- day. Basically, I get you know, easy. <laughs> surprised. If, if they did that in this, I would not be surprised. I would not. <laughs> Um, so, okay, I was just thinking about it. I have to take that back. Main character in the very beginning, very empty-headed, very goofy, very one-dimensional, I'm strong kind of da 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 kind of situation, and, and just has a great deal of willpower. As the story progresses, more facets of him are introduced. So I'm not necessarily sure if that was the intention or if they just really didn't know how to introduce a character while fleshing out his character, more or less. Um, Or if that's just because of the way the anime just portrayed it and the manga actually went more into it. I don't know. Um, I will say that, yeah, there are some moments with him uh, in, in future episodes that definitely make me think that he is um, he has more to him he has more to him he's definitely he goes into this very much like oh I'm now you know a curse essentially and you know I gotta take care of this but you know hey let's have some fun while doing it and then at certain point, the realization and the weight of what is his now his quote unquote task and responsibility hits home, and you kind of start to feel for him a bit, because you're like, dude, you are in way over your head, um, and and you cannot take the fact of the um, what's his name. The, the curse that resides into him. I can't remember what they what his name was or whatever. Um, you, but you cannot take the fact that he has this curse as like a trump card. And this was very interesting to me because yeah, at one like point... It's not like not a QB. <laughs> no, no, because you can't... You can't Because in situations like that, I'm also thinking, I'm like, well, what's the... What is the incentive of the other half? What's the incentive of the person that he has inside of him who he's essentially suppressing for his own personality, not just, you know, actually helping out instead of doing whatever, you know what I mean? And that kind of come to coalesce because they get put into a situation where he could very well die. Like, it was very bad in a lot of ways. And... He, when seeing, when faced with the situation and realizing what he was up against, he contacts that spirit inside inside of him and says, hey, are you going to protect this body? And he goes, I really don't care. I have other pieces of me floating around here. So if this, this portion gets destroyed, I don't care. And he's like, and if you let me loose right now, I won't kill what's trying to kill you. I'll go after your friends. So he's put in a very awkward situation. Like <laughs> he can't he can't just he can't just call on his other half as a trump card to save him. There are repercussions and consequences to using this other person. And even when he 
manages to circumvent some of these negatives that are going to hap potentially happen. When his other half comes out, he still, or uh, Sukuna, that's what it was, Sukuna. When Sukuna comes out, he still wants to go after his friends, mm -hmm. even though he removed them from the equation. And like, at least for a good distance, so he couldn't immediately just go and kill his friends. Mm -hmm. He still was like, hey, other spirit, let's go, kill, let's go kill the kids. Let's go find them and go kill them. You, you know what I mean? So it's like one of those situations where you're like, damn, that's a that's a tough, like, that's a tough place to be in. You know? And he's even told by um, his, you know, sensei, the dude with the blindfold on, that, like, you're a first year, you don't know how to use curse power. His other two friends know how to use curse power, but they're not as strong as he is. So he has the strength. He just doesn't have the have the know how in order to use what he has. So he's really going into it just with sheer, just again from the very beginning, just sheer willpower, sheer will force, is what it is. So ah, there there is a lot going on in this, and I'm I'm all for it. I'm all for it. There is as as storytelling wise. They've set up a good narrative. Um, I, I'm curious to see how the main character, Yuji, will take care of the fact that he has a curse inside of him that is trying to take over, and the fact that the people he's working for essentially have tasked him with consuming the rest of the pieces of said uh, Sukuna and then intend to kill him in order to alleviate the, the threat of Sukuna ever coming back. Oh, okay. And then now it's like, that's that's their intent, but like, how is he going to circumvent this fate that he's been given? You know what I mean? I mean, it's, it's, it's a, it's a interesting spot. And, and now there is also essentially talk on where I'm at right now in it to where the bad guys, the curses, the spirits could potentially be offering Yuji and Sukuna a deal to be on their side. Okay. And it's like, I know Yuji would have reservations about that because it would be a matter of now killing his friends, but there's a tough choice to be in, in, in part of because He's essentially been told that if he consumes all the parts of Sukuna, he's they're gonna kill him in order to rid the world of this threat. Well, now he's been given the option of, well, hey, if you consume all the persons a, a piece of Sukuna, we're cool with keeping you around. Yeah, so it's like, what choice do you make in that regards? Someone's literally saying, yeah, your your sacrifice will get rid of the ultimate evil for the world, or at least a, a ultimate evil for the world, but you're going to sacrifice yourself. But then the other side's going, I don't mind you living. As long as you don't mess with what we're doing, or you help us in our plans, I don't mind you living. You know what I mean? So it's like, man, that's a rough spot to be in. I don't know. And it's, and it's like he has to consume the other pieces or else well, somebody that's, else that's, will? That's the task he's been given. Uh -huh. It's not to say someone else will, but those those pieces of them on their own are dangerous to begin with. Yeah. Those pieces can potentially cause disasters on their own. Just a piece. Yeah. Okay. So, say if another curse potentially consumed a piece, they would get a major power boost. Yeah. All right. <laughs> no, it, it, it's, 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 it's such a... Oh, man. I mean... 
it's such an interesting place to be in. I don't I don't think it is the storyline new. No, there's really nothing new about it because here again we have somebody just like you said, like Naruto, who's sharing the body of one body, two people. Of this one evil entity and it's with a massive evil amount of power. With a massive amount of power. We've been down this road before. But the way in which they are handling it is quite different. And all of this is taking place in our world. Our world, our time, this is what this is taking place in. You know, so it's it's an interesting way of going about it. I'm I'm liking the direction it's going in, and I'm curious to see how it will progress from here. Okay. Yeah, this is one of the shows that I'm I plan to keep up with because it was. Oh yeah, and um, the animation this is stunning too. Oh yeah, there's a lot of shows this season where I'm like, whoa. <laughs> I'm like, is this is this because of is this because of COVID? Everybody got more time to animate, or, or what? Well, this is done by Mappa. Yeah, man. We uh, know we we like our some Mappa. Yeah. So, um, one part that kind of made me sad is Grandpa. Yeah. I was like, wait, what? For real? No way. Really? I mean, but that really sets the stage and, and pushes him into the decisions that he makes. Yeah. I was so, like, and then I started reflecting, and I'm like, and you said this? Uh, yeah. I was just kind of sad for a while. Um, yeah, this show, man, it is very good. Absolutely. I totally intend on com uh, completing this, and I will say that anyone out there interested in any sort of fantasy set in our world uh, with really good storyline, uh, great characters, um, I give this a watch. Just watch the first episode. I guarantee you, you'll be hooked. Guarantee you'll be hooked. All right. The next show we'll be talking about is Kamitachi ni Hiroeta Otoko, or By the Grace of the Gods. Yes. Okay, so this one, <laughs> this one I feel like gets gets a bad rap because I've, I've seen the comments in Funimation on this. Um, <laughs> what? As you were saying that, I was like, I don't like this show. <laughs> I, I I feel like this one gets a bad rap. Now I'll I'll say, I'll say why I understand why it gets a bad rap, and and then I'll say why I think it doesn't deserve the rap it's it's being given. So I'll go ahead and say my part. Go ahead. As everybody knows, I'm not a big fantasy person, and. I felt about this show like you feel about Yudu Camp. I'll say, I, I, and I get that. I do. I, I actually get that. So here's 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 my here's my hot take on this. So I feel like so what ends up happening a lot with this is this is for those of you who don't know. This is the story of a man who ends up dying and getting reborn uh, through the grace of three gods in another world. Um, and he is given a lot of blessings. So he's incredibly strong, fast, he has a great deal of magic ability, and... Um, one of the very first things he comes across is a slime in which he tames and then essentially entailing the first episode, he lives out his first, you know, three years, three years in this world in a forest by himself. 
So, not a whole lot going on. And as as things progress and and we see how things move, there if, if you're expecting when you look at fantasy, people look at fantasy and they have certain expectations. You're like, okay, there's going to be magic abound. There's going to be, you know, fantasy characters. We're going to come across elves. We're going to come across beast people. We're going to come across, you know, all this other stuff, uh, monsters, and there's going to be fight sequences and da 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 da. I get that because ninety five percent of fantasy anime, that's what this entails. Now, so when those people go in with this expectation of this, I can see why you look at this and you're like, this sucks. Because there's not a whole lot that goes on. Even with the first four episodes, not a whole lot of goes on. But that's not what the show is about. And they don't necessarily come out and say it. And, and part of it is, I, I also read comments where people were saying there are certain parts that they are skipping over in the anime that the the light novel or manga touched on and 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 they're kind of glossing over a few little bits and pieces what this story is about is the life that this man led and the reason why the gods chose to bless him and reincarnate him in another world. Because as the story progresses, you realize he had a very sad life. Very bad life. Um, so most of this, what it comes down to, is characterization. Characterization and character development. Um, and, and I'll give you an example of, of one of the things that happened. So he eventually ends up coming, and I, I'm going to say stuff because I'm pretty sure you're just the way you said you're not going to continue watching anyways, but he eventually gets, comes, goes with the people that you see, the, the ones that came to him originally. Okay. And yeah, he ends up going with them to the town they wanted to bring him to town they wanted to kind of help him they wanted to take care of him because they saw him out there alone by himself didn't know much about him but they figured it's like an 11 year old boy essentially on his own you, you know they, that, that seemed like a bad situation they didn't know everything that he can do or all the stuff that's happening but um he ends up taking a job because he, he, he gets put into a guild because they see that he has abilities and in order to in order for him not to get taken advantage of, they're like, you know what, put yourself in a guild, rank up, and then you'll put yourself in a higher station to where people will not feel like they can take advantage of you. You'll have oh. a repu you'll have a reputation, you'll have things ahead of you and and you can you you'll manage kind of thing. I had a question about his um, abilities and powers. So, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> when he had his hand on the uh, orb, they could read his powers, and they didn't really seem like anything. But then, so, oh, I no, don't but think, then I don't think because of either a he was hiding it or b he was only giving them certain like. I don't think it could read the information based upon what he is because his powers come from the gods. Yeah. They're not uh, your oh. average, they're not your standard like every day. Like what he can do, there are certain people who can do that, but to the extent and the power that he has and the ability for him to do that with is not normal. Okay, because they read his powers and I'm like Oh, he's a little weak guy. Okay, I can see why they're trying to protect him. And then they went into like the flashback of how he actually got there, and then he kicked the tree in half. And I'm like, wait yeah. a minute, yeah, <laughs> that yeah. ain't that strength level doesn't match. No, no. But no, yeah, no. that makes sense. So, anyways, he takes a job 
um, because he has these slimes, and they each have their own abilities in doing things. He takes a job uh, cleaning out, um, essentially, this town's latrine system, essentially, their sewer system, essentially. Um, and he ends up finding there's multiple stations that he has to go through, but he ends up finding that one that from the first one that he goes and cleans, that there is a miasma over the entire, like someone essentially put like a very bad poison inside of this, and 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 and, and it's really not a good situation. Well, he has certain ways and certain abilities that makes it to where it's not. He can't nullify it, essentially, but he has some resistances to it. And he said, basically, he told the, the guild leader, he said, look, I'm the best person for the job. I can take care of this. Because at first they're like, no, we're going to send people in there. And they're like, no, the only thing you're doing sending people in there is causing, essentially, more victims. Don't send more people in there. Let me take care of this. Just basically hold people off. Don't let anyone approach is the best thing you can do until I give you the all clear. Um, he even, he even there was a meeting what he's having with the people that's around him too, that you have in the picture, the ones that he met originally. He told them the same thing. He said, look, you know, because they're the ones in charge of the town. He said, look, I'll take care of this. Just keep everyone away. Well, it ends up taking him like three days to take care of this, of constant work. Like, he doesn't stop because he's like, I, you know, if, if I let this is fester or, you know, there's a chance that it'll escape and I, yeah, you know, that'll, then that'll just be disastrous. I can't let that happen. So it's the morning of the third day when he finally finishes. He reports back to the guild, lets them know, hey, it's done. Uh, and then he goes home. On his way home, he remembers because he sees the sun coming up and he goes, I used to do this all the time where I would work, you know, at my job until wee hours of the morning when the sun was coming up only to, you know, essentially go to bed for some, you know, small amount of time, get back up and do it all over again. And he, he remembers having gone home to his little apartment Apparently, he lived with his mom, and he said she would she would actually be up waiting for him to come home. And it was one of those situations where he felt at home because of that. Well, then you find out it wasn't long after that memory, his mom passed away. So he would come home, and it would just be an empty apartment. No one there to greet him, no one there to say hi, no one there to even light on waiting for him or whatever. And, you know, it, he said it, even when she died, he, he couldn't even muster, you know, the tears, you know, he, he, to, to, to cry because he just he felt empty. He felt just, you know, gone in that regards. Well, he walks in and there's everyone there waiting for him, greeting him, saying, welcome home. You know, do you, do you need, you know, do you want to? Do you need something to eat or do you just want to go to bed? Do you want to clean up? Yada, yada, yada. And and he breaks down and starts crying. Because it was just one of those situations where he just, it reminded him of something that he lost, that he thought he no longer had or could have because that part of his life was gone. And now here it was, someone was once again showing compassion towards him and caring about him and and he felt at home and i'm like look no matter what you may think no matter what you may say that's character development it's character growth and that's what if anything else this story is about like everything else going on in the background his tasks his jobs what he's doing that's all background noise almost essentially that's just a way for us to continue the story a means to an end almost kind of thing his interactions with people because he even said he spent three years by himself and didn't have any intention on leaving that forest 
only because he didn't want to be around people anymore. And I think a lot of people maybe can relate to that. You just don't want to be around people sometimes. You just have that feeling where you're just like, I'm done. I don't want to deal with society. I don't want to deal with people. You know, I've been beat up. I've been, you know, torn and, and shredded. And I'm just done. And given the opportunity, I'm sure there are plenty of people who, if they could actually manage it, would go live in a forest for however many years just to get away from people or whatever. And it took this family having found him or him having found them, however you look at it, to him to come back to civilization and to start seeing that he didn't necessarily, like, his his trials and tribulations he went through in our world, as bad as they may have been, weren't, like, it, they're still... He could still make things better for himself. And and people in society don't necessarily mean that they're, you know, worth giving up on. And, and, and he can actually progress as a person. So all in all, I, you know, taking it from a person who enjoys fantasy, who loves the sword fight, magical, whatever, and, and, and all that. You know, the little bits and pieces they have in there, I appreciate. But I am thoroughly enjoying just, like, the character development and and learning more about it. Because even somebody in the comment section said, by the end of it, you more than realize and are agreeing with how much power... Like, the fact that he was given as much power as he was... And the blessings from the gods he was given, you totally agree with. And you think it is well deserved from his character by the fact that he was given these things. So yeah, I'm 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 a fan. I'm all for it. I, I, I appreciate, you know, the little nuances that he has, the fact that there are certain times that they flash back to his old life and he's sitting there getting yelled at by his boss for something and whatnot. And then when he gets complimented by somebody here for the work he's done or for helping them out, and he has that little, like, faint little blush that he has on him or whatever, and you're like... And, and he even sometimes, you know, internally monologue voices it going, you know, to be appreciated by somebody. And you realize, you know, there are so many people out there who probably are in the exact same situation who have no zero appreciation and who only who only get continually ragged on by everyone for you know the job that they do because they feel like they could have done better or they didn't do as good as they should have kind of thing and and here he is just doing you know whatever he can and people are absolutely ecstatic with him and are complimenting him and encouraging him and i'm like god can we take like a life lesson from this for, for, for you know for people or whatever can people like take a moment and not focus so much on like the violence and 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 oh we got to go defeat a demon king or whatever and realize this is just human raw human emotions this is like ideally what people in our world should strive to be just encouraging one another helping one another being uh, happy for one another appraising for one another don't pull people down bring them up you know, and and I, I feel like this kind of embodies that so well and and just really drives things home as far as character development goes. And and if anyone ever wants to have more of that in either their their story, their writing, their whatever it is that you're doing, take a hint from this, watch this and just feel like that is that is something you should, that you should strive for in this. So. I get why people are negative on it. I do. It doesn't necessarily feel like a lot goes on. And for the most part, you're 100% correct. Not a lot kind of goes on. There are some movements in the story and progressions and what happens. But a lot of the things that they do, they, they typically tend to like, they're like, oh, well, there, there was 
corruption in in this town's government and the the duke and his family when they get there you know they realize that and they go to investigate it but you only hear about it you don't see what they do about it because that's not where their focus is so i'm yeah, i'm i am 100 percent finishing the show and i honestly would recommend this show i know it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea i realize that it's it's you gotta there's a certain mindset you gotta walk into this with and if you don't have that mindset you're gonna hate it you're gonna think it's dumb stupid and not a whole lot going on but that's just it's it's not it's not everyone's cup of tea and it's not and you don't have that mindset it's just what it is so That's completely understandable. Alright. The next show we're we'll talking about is King's Raid. Oh, actually, before. I, I just thought of something. So. I, I get it because I'm on the opposite side of it. So it's kind of like with Uter Camp, where it's like, I found what I like in Uter Camp, and I can't figure out a way to convince everybody that Uter Camp is awesome. You haven't watched Uter Camp, so when you, when, when, if you were to watch it, I can't, I'd like, I don't know what you would say for a reason why it wasn't good for people who actually liked it. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of in that opposite situation where it's like, I can see that the character development um, would be a huge draw for it. And I do like how in the show, they, um, it's a different, like different aspects of like brought to another world where it's like, most of the time people are just living an either okay life or maybe they have a few problems or maybe a lot of problems. And then when they go to the other world, everything's great and they're surrounded by friends and all this, all this crazy events and all that kind of stuff. And this show is more like he has a miserable previous life. And because of that, when he gets moved into the other world, he's gifted with a bunch of different things, but he doesn't bestow it on other people because he's like, I, I don't want to be around people. Mm. And most of that, I don't know. So what I got from this show was he's in a better situation and I've been in that point where it's like overtime, seven days, just work, 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 work. And mm -hmm. it's like no and, hot, and you, no friends, no other thing outside of just work. And you never get any appreciation for that. Yeah. You put yourself to the to the test on that and you never it's it's like they should thank you afterwards and be like, oh, thank you so much for helping us push that way through and mm -hmm. and getting us to that point. Da 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 da. But that's never the case. No, all you get is a get it done, and then yeah. that's and then the next get it done. So yep. it's like it. Yeah, it's like whenever I saw his like previous life, it kind of brought back jobs that I just hated. Mm -hmm. And, but then, because I haven't seen a lot of this show, I'm like, okay, previous life is not so cool. Moving on to another life where, for me, I'm like, it's like previous job to a job that I would love or hobbies. For his path, is life, previous life is not so great to, I guess, his hobby is like learning about the slimes and all that kind of stuff. So it's like he's doing something that entertains him, but it's not what entertains me. So I'm mm. like, you do you. I'm gonna go watch something else. <laughs> so no, that's I, understandable. Yeah, so. that, that, that's that's completely understandable. <laughs> and and I mean, it's it's you you begin to realize it's more than just the slimes. His slimes was a big portion of it. 
Mm-hmm. But, like, he talks about the fact that he's dabbled in different m- magics because he realized he had the ability to use all kinds of magics. So, like, he dabbled in alchemy. He dabbled in um, a couple other different things that even when he told the Duke that, they're like, wow, really? That's a real rare thing to find from somebody to be able to do something in regards to that. You know, it's a very niche kind of thing. And, um, you know, his willingness, his willingness to help is, I think, you know, one of those big, like, you, you think, you look to see how bad his life was previously. And he has, here's a person who is given every reason not to do anything. Like, you're like, all right, you know what? He's just like, I, I wouldn't blame him if he's just like, you know what? I'm done with it. I'm not going to do anything. I don't care, you know, or he could have just been like, oh, they found me in the forest. You know what? I'm going to move. I'm going to separate and just be like, all right, I'm, I'm going to take my myself and leave, yada, 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 whatever. But he's still willing to try, and I got to give him props for that. When something like that, I mean, that's that that's humanity showing through to me. When you get pushed down so many times and you're still willing to get back up. Mind you, he had three years to kind of take a little short vacation and break and be like, all right, let me distance myself a little bit so I don't have to <laughs> deal with that for a little while. But he still, once once it was called for him, he's like, he's he's doing things and he thinks that... What the great thing about it is to me is like he does these things and he he thinks they're nothing. Because to him it's just like, well, anyone in this situation would do the same thing, mm-hmm. you know. And yet everyone's like, oh my god, this is amazing! Thank you so much for for doing this. Which then, because then that's that's the mentality because you you do these things because you think you're expected to do them, and you don't ever get anything back from it as far as just any sort of like kindness or words of agreement or whatever. And then when you all of a sudden get that and get shown that, I mean, it's almost like it's foreign. You know, that that really just makes you show so how sad his life was in that regards. And I'm assuming as the story progresses, we're going to get even more details about how his life was and how sad it was. Because... I mean, here's the thing. They talked about his mom. What about his dad? Yeah. Well, he, did, say, huh? he didn't mention his dad once. Did he? In his, first ep- in his first episode. He's like, I went through all that crap with my dad. and. Okay. I don't know. Maybe I missed that. But I mean, I'm, I'm thinking they're going to do even more of that. Like, they're going to explain more about his past life. And you, you mean, you even knew sure how he died, right? Did they explain that in the first episode? I can't remember. Yeah, that's, that was part of it. He was like... Yeah, yeah. Um, they're like he sneezed in his sleep and then like fell and knocked his head open. And yeah. Then he's like, and then he got like super pissed and he's like, I went through all that crap in my life and my dad was abusing and blah 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 and I just fall asleep from a sneeze. And part of me's like, dang, that's a bad way to go. But God, yeah, I feel you. Like going <laughs> through all that and then just poof. See, I mean, yeah, I mean, so I mean, there's so much of this. I feel like is just you're learning about the character and and you see what he's had to go through, and then to see how he is in his life, personality-wise, and that he still continues to try when so many people would just give up is is a huge testament, I think. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm curious to see, like, how, how this story um, develops and, like, because... I feel like he has so far he hasn't used like all of his powers, and I'm like, did the did the, no. the gods have like a plan for him? And is he like following through on what they? One have? of the one of the episodes because he actually meets back up with the gods, uh, and converses with them. He finds out he wasn't the first one to come here, and that uh, there are actually, ironically enough, the the Duke's family that he's staying with is uh, has had. Their ancestors have been from previous people who have come from this world, or from That's this. That's cool. And and they've been given different blessings in sort of way, and it was it's funny because uh, the girl that he tries to help, uh, that he helps out more or less, and kind of they they 
it can be can misconstrued, but he more or less thinks of her as a sister. Um, it's one you see in the in the picture there. Mm-hmm. Um, she has immense magical power, mm-hmm. but he remembered the fact that one of her ancestors that came into this plane had actually been gifted immense magical power, and because he he viewed himself as one of the uh, Chunin, dark sorcerer, magician kind of situations. Okay. You know, he was he was given the option, and he he lived out his fantasy of being the, you know, what is it that one that one anime where they had the character who had the the eye patch or would whatever, and oh, don't make me reveal my eye or, you know, what I'm talking about. Oh, like, like, like. Like acting like something's more than it is, like like it. Yeah, is it Cunin or Chunin or something like that? that Chunibia. Yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. So he had that mentality, but he was he had been gifted with immense magical power, and then he ends up finding out that she actually has almost as much. Ma- he actually she actually has more magical power than he does. Uh huh. Okay. You know, and it was like, and then he thought, he was like, wow. And then he remembered himself. He's like, oh, that's because of her ancestor was yada, yada, yada. Okay. And, and then going into the Adventurer's Guild, he ends up finding out that one of the, his tests in order to pass into the Adventurer's Guild was to essentially clay skeet shooting, except it was done differently a little bit. And it was okay. because the Guild Master said, oh, one of our previous ones who set this up actually had a weapon he called a shotgun and they're like he's like wow so the gods actually allowed him to bring over something from the other world and and allowed him i'm like he's like all right well i guess we're gonna do what we gotta do then but i mean it's it's interesting to see it's like okay so there are other people who have come from his world or what whatnot okay you know and and whatnot he's not the first to do this but i it's it's just interesting to see it's and you wouldn't you wouldn't think there would be a whole lot to do with slimes either, but there's actually quite a bit, at least as far as what they've done. So this is the first show where I've seen a floating turd inside of a slime. <laughs> uh, one thing I had a question about is uh, that that little explanation that they had where they're like. They show two worlds, and they're like, you are going to go from this world to that world and bring magic with you or something like that. I think that's an interesting thought process and explanation. Because they're, what they're saying is is that we have magic in our world. We've just forgotten how to, how to use it. Which, if you think about it, it could go into the explanation of... Um, how magic and science have diverged us. Why bother learning how to do things with with magic when science can do the thing for you? But it could be a case of we have two similar worlds with each other. Like we're both almost identical to each other with the exception of one developed with the usage of magic while the other one developed with the usage of science. Okay. Both both are advanced in their own ways. It's just a matter of what process you're looking at. So, yeah, when they when they came up with that that explanation on that, I was like, I like the idea of that. I really do. <laughs> so, again, a lot to be here. I, I you really have to kind of look into it and and be open minded in a lot of ways. And and take away some preconceived notions about this genre, I guess, in general. Hmm. So, one thing I kind of thought is um, this is kind of like the slice of life stuff that you like from yeah. that genre. I would say, yeah. Yeah. This this to me is in the same same ish realm as say like um, Natsume in a way because there's really not a whole lot going on. We have our certain things that do happen, 
but it's it's really just kind of like a day to day life kind of thing. Mm. All right. The next show we're talking about is King's Raid. I did not get to this one. Yeah, King's Raid. So I watched the first episode of, of this and um not gonna watch anymore. <laughs> not 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 gonna watch anymore. This 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 might be a rare instance of me dropping a fantasy just pretty much right off the bat. <laughs> that kinda wish I watched it. <laughs> um so here's 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 a problem I have, and I and I think I can see where this stems from. This anime is based upon a video game. Okay. Um. Not to say that necessarily bad, but here's what's happening a lot with with and so this would essentially be an RP. I'm not even sure it was an RPG video game, but essentially I guess you could say it's an RPG video game. Um. A lot of times, their focus is more upon the playability aspect of it than it is storyline. Yeah. And that shows here. It's not bad. It's just not great. It's fairly mediocre. Like... This is definitely one of those fantasies that is playing uh, playing the tropes by the numbers. And it's just it's hitting all the check mark boxes. But I mean again, if it's based on a game, there are certain sequences on a game in any fantasy world sort of setting that you have to have that you you kind of you you don't want to throw your game for you know the game is for a curveball. Because you're more focused on gameplay aspect of it and keeping them entertained than you are storyline. I hate to say that because that shouldn't be the case, but more times than not, in at least the most current things, it is. Um, I'll say, for instance, so the character in... Let's see if he's on the one the picture you have. Oh yeah, so that character there, the one that the the, the dude on it's the character on the right, not the one okay. on the left. He's introduced, and everyone immediately has prejudices because he's a dark elf, and oh my god, elves, uh, human civilization, we'll take care of our own stuff. Da 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 da. da. And you're and and. They go so hard into him being a bad guy. And the person, the human who introduced him to the council as a way of helping with the problem that they're having, seeming such like a sleazeball kind of situation, that I'm like, man, you've gone too hard into it. There's got to be like some sort of like twist to where like he's not the bad guy or there's a misunderstanding somewhere or somebody you know doesn't quite you know it's so, some something's got to happen here you, it cannot just be this straightforward you know what i mean yeah because like you're leaning into it heavily like if it was a freaking plate this would be something that someone just smacked you upside the head with after showing, like, hey, this is a plate. You get it? It's a plate. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're like, I get it. It's a plate. I understand. The end of the episode, he meets up with some of his other fellow Duck Elves and says they want to destroy humanity. And I'm like, really? Really? So, you are a bad guy. Wow. All right. Sure. I mean, I guess you kind of forewarned us, but uh, 
why so hard? Why not be <laughs> sly about it? Why not be coy about it? Why not make it seem like you're the good guy? And then <laughs> you can make the double cross and come back and go, aha, I was fooling you the entire time. No, we're, you're going to seem like the bad guy and you are the bad guy. Wow. What a twist. You know what I mean? I'm just like, <laughs> all right, sure. You know, and then like they get they get reported early on about demons in the woods, and this guy's mentor is like, "Ha ha! Never fear! I'll handle it swiftly and justly, and we're going." You know, it, it, I you know you can't even beat me. You you know you can't come out here with us, but we'll we'll handle this. No problem. No sweat. Don't worry about it. Da 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 da. And I'm like, so somebody just raised a death flag. I'm like, if we're going to, if we're going tropey by the numbers here, you just gave a whole bunch of reasons why you're not going to die. Oh no! <laughs> um, you, you just gave a whole bunch. Of, I know. <laughs> so. You just gave a whole bunch of reasons why you're not going to die, so you're going to die. And sure enough, he died. <laughs> I'm like, wow. Didn't see that one coming. <laughs> I'm like, could you? It's, all right, you know what? You do you, man. You do you. I'm like, I, I, this is already giving me a headache. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm, I'm done. <gasps> So it's like more than predictable. Oh God! It's like I could give this to like, like what? Is there a specific term for that? I don't even know. I feel like a, like a, a ten year old wrote the storyline on this. I really do. And then they fight, and then this person dies, and then they fight some more. And then this is the bad guy. And then and, and, and his like, name is Mr. Bad Guy. <laughs> this is Mr. Bad Guy. And I'm like. <laughs> oh uh, yeah. I I just I couldn't I couldn't keep I couldn't allow myself to keep going on that. I'm like, you know what? There are two other better animes out this season <laughs> and other things that I wanna do. I I can't. I just can't. So I'm like, nope. Passing. <laughs> Passing. <laughs> I can't I can't see this. I can't see it. It's uh, to me to a fantasy buff like me, it's like watching a train wreck. Mm. <laughs> so yeah. Maybe one day on a whim. <laughs> yeah. If you literally have nothing else better to do, <laughs> go for it. But I'm giving this one a hard pass. Oh. All right. The next show we're going to talk about is Majo no Tabby Tabby. Ah, did you watch this one? Yes. I only watched the first episode. How many did you watch? The first episode? First episode. First episode. Fucking bro! I, I really, Jesus. really enjoyed this one. I thought this one was awesome. Yes. Um, I'm kind of sad I haven't continued it since then, but I, I, I thought this was, a, this was an amazing enemy. Um, from the detail of, of the, uh, the animation, which is done by C2C, which I don't recognize. Yeah, I don't recognize them either. Like, this is one of the shows that's like... So this is a fairly new anime, or anime company from this. Because um, they really don't have a lot under their belt. Yeah, this season, there's been a lot of, um, a lot of, like, the animation's been cranked up. It has. It really has, and so, I am I am all about that. I am I am all about that. I am loving the fact that people are, I mean I guess like you said maybe it's because they have the time frame because of COVID or something. I don't know, 
But I'm loving the fact that that's even happening because it is just an absolute... You know, I will say this. When it comes to magic, you got to have it look good. You know, I don't care what it is that you're doing. You know, things in um, Magus' Bride. Oh, that's what it reminds me of. Did so well because of how good it looked. It made fantasy and magic look commonplace. You know, where it wasn't out of out of step. I will say something like, because um, there's another one that came out too. I want to say it's playing on uh, Crunchyroll mm-hmm. right now. I mean, let me double check. Because um, I almost confused the two. Burn the Witch. Yes! Did you watch that one? I started because I thought Burn the Witch was the other one. And then I started watching it and I got halfway through the episode. I'm like, no. I can't. I meant to put it on the list. Well, maybe we'll do a double header on this one then. So I will say between the two, I'm more of a fan of, of Majo no Tabitella. So I, you I, said the animation, I was like, there was another one that was animated really good. <laughs> it it did, but the way they did it still made it look out of place. Mm-hmm. And Majo, it looked just in place. Yeah, like it was an everyday thing. I, I could, be, I, you know, it, it to me, it's, it's like walking into the Weasley's place for Harry Potter. Mm-hmm. Everything in there looked like it should have been there, mm-hmm. even dishes that were doing themselves, and you know, things that were sweeping or cleaning that were moving on their own. I'm like, I totally believe that. I totally get and totally buy that. You know, it doesn't look out of ordinary to me. I, I'd swear this would be, that would be here. Burn the witch, like a dude's flying with his whatever little dog creature mm. thing, and I'm like, and everyone's just like, oh hey, look, he's flying. I'm like, <laughs> you're not freaking out about the dude up there who's flying. And then the other witches come in and go, hey, we saved you, but, you know, it's only because we got paid to do so. And I'm like, all right, I already hate you as a character. (laughs) And everything you've done magical-wise has looked so far out of place, I don't even know where to begin. Um, But, yeah, so Majo, to me, way better. Um... It has so much going for it. Uh, I love the little slice of life story that we have with her. Um, Elena? Yeah. Elena, uh, how to be a witch. She was uh, a little cocky at the beginning. She was. I was like, well, hey, I, girl. I, I, I like the fact that she was brought down, though. Oh, yes. So we took that character arc that not a lot of people like. Of being cocky, head, cocky, and like, oh, I'm a prodigy, I can do da 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 da, and we brought that down rather quick, because she was told like, you know, look, you may know a lot about magic, but you may not be as as crafty as you think you are, because no, being book smart and being street smart are two completely different things. Yes, I do and also I think- like the stage where she went. I'm awesome and everybody just hates me. Well, but do you do you disagree that that was kind of it would be a reasonable assumption to have? Yeah, like, I, like normally it's um her cockiness I completely agree with. Yeah, they're usually cocky and capable and then and other like there's cocky capable and people adore them because nobody else is stronger and then there's cocky and everybody's jealous. Mm-hmm. And I like how it was she was cocky and capable, and people were like, she's a prodigy, and then it went from now she needs to rely on other people, and everybody, everybody's like, turns her down. So yeah. I like how like that extra stage was in there. Yeah, well, and it, it just made, it reinforced the idea that people were jealous of her because of her capabilities, and because of that, people would then turn her down or be like, you know, oh, I, you know, I, 
it, it, it her her they set up the character arc that actually made sense. Yes. And the baseline. It actually made sense. And I'm all for that. I'm all for having a character who makes sense. And I'm all for the idea that she is going to be taking this journey and exploring just being a witch. Like, I'm I'm okay with that. Like I said, to me, and I so far haven't seen anything to counteract that, to me, this looks like Kino's journey as a witch. Oh, yeah. Because now she's going to travel. She's going to go to different places. She's going to meet different people, going to make friends, uh, make acquaintances, make relationships, and she's just going to have herself a good time. And she'll learn more things along the way, I'm sure. She'll grow further. She'll be able to use better, you know, more magic and whatnot. And she'll continue her, you know, the fact that her mother gave her a journal before she left and said to write your day activities in it. And I'm like, that's that's what this is going to be. That is what this is going to be. Where, you know, if, if every episode starting after this one, I almost guarantee you, is going to be her writing in in her, her journal. And 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 we're gonna her it's gonna be her recounting what is already what's about to happen that we're about to see, I bet, is how yes. they're gonna play it as. Yes. And that's gonna be our, our, our introduction to every episode every and I'm all for that. I'm like, that's a great that's gonna be a great way to do it. But you've set up that possibility. So you know yeah, I, this is great. Again, yeah. the art style is amazing. Um I love, I mean, even just looking at just the trailer as it's kind of been, I mean, the background as we've been talking, oh God, just the details they have and everything and her look and like the magical particles that are around her when she got scuffed up in that battle that she had with that one witch. Um, with a teacher? Yeah, her teacher. So... <sighs> I love the parents in this show. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that whole... Because, yeah, like, they didn't say that it, old... You realize the fact that the only reason why the star, star witch or whatever came to town was for her. Yeah. That's the only reason. Because once her, once, her, once her education was complete, she left. Yeah. The house just, boom, turned into leaves. Bye. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the one thing that I like about the parents is uh, like the mom, quote unquote, wears the pants, mm -hmm. and like the dads are like, "My oh, baby's leaving," <laughs> not crying. Uh, yeah, no, and I'm all for that dichotomy like that. I that that to me is great. Yeah, and because of that, I'm like, where is the mom's story? Like, is the mom a retired witch? Like. <laughs> She seems well prepared on sending her daughter off on this journey. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what stories do you have? Like, what was the moment that this guy got you to, like, settle down? Like, were you out there causing the ruckus, and, like, living your life? Like, I'm just, I'm just really, really curious. Like, mm -hmm. like, they built up the mom to be a really cool character. Um, one thing that I kind of really liked also about, um, uh, Elena is she kind of had like a 2020 breakdown mm -hmm. where it's like everybody this year it's like after one incident after the next incident after the next incident after the next incident sometime in 2020 you just started crying and you're like mm -hmm. will this year ever be over going through everything that the, the Star Witch went like um, was <laughs> paid to have her go through. I do really like how basically she was just there to like make sure that she is knocked down a peg because she's not going to be able to survive out in the world without being able to know how to deal with hardship. And I don't know. It's like seeing that whole journey and then like the battle right at the end and mm. even the Star Witch had to like hold her own against this prodigy mm -hmm. to make sure that the prodigy didn't win 
as much as it like drained the star witch mm -hmm. um i'm glad that she was able to like muster the power to like kind of make sure that she struggles um but then again i don't know it's like as soon as like she she's kind of like you don't have to endure everything all the time i was like i know 2020's been so hard <laughs> <laughs> so it was like a relief i don't know like somebody just kind of telling you like it'll be okay so I'm like ah. <laughs> so this year be over mm -hmm. so um yeah, I, I don't know. I was like, there's so much about this show that I like really like. Um, and yeah, I, this is one of the ones that I really want to um, keep up with. I do like how you referenced that it is probably going to be just like Kino's journey. And mm -hmm. that that makes me excited because in the first episode, they had this crazy epic battle. And it's like, with Kino's journey, it's like really, really interesting concepts and different like style like different li living styles whether you're living well, in a city that's just... still a place as far as what they came through because he'd have his fights too oh yeah but he didn't have magic so well, now yeah. i'm like so now it, i'm like it, it's as as what they say there's no new stories there's a retelling of old stories in a different way yeah so this is kino's journey with magic yeah so this is kino's journey but now the battles are going to be more intense more vibrant, more out there because magic's involved. Yes. And it's like, phys like I guess I'm not sure how to describe the types of magic. Because there's like incantation magic where they're like mm -hmm. reading from books or like saying, saying the name of the magic before it happens. And this is more like real time magic where it's just mm -hmm. shooting stuff, jumping, lifting the earth, throwing rocks and stuff like that. So I'm like, that's my type of magic that I love. So I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, this is going to be good. So, um, and it's like, during that fight, you thought that the Star Witch was like one of the strongest. And she was almost tapped out. So I'm like, oh, she's dead. Like, this, when, she, when Elena goes on her journey, she's definitely going to meet like someone way stronger. Oh, for sure. So I'm like, Oh, it's gonna be so good. But um, yeah, yeah. There's there's many aspects of the show that I am really excited to like see play out. And um, yeah, for sure, I'm I'm excited about this one. I I would honestly say out of all of them, this is probably this is easily in my top three for this season. Oh yeah. I'm I'm kind of vying for what uh, ones we've said. I know Dungeon's got to be up there as well. Oh, definitely. So I would say Dungeon, uh, Jujutsu, and this and this one are probably like in my top three. I don't know what order they're in, mm -hmm. but I know they're in top three. Okay. Uh, so since we mentioned it. I kind of want to do a little, I don't have a picture for it, but for Burn the Witch. Mm -hmm. So, this show. I, I am, I just say, I am totally not a fan and immediately dropped it halfway through the episode. <laughs> so. It's weird. Like, there's witches but they ride on dragons instead of brooms. And um, what is the name of that one show? Um, uh, there's, it's a show by Bones. Maybe I can find it if I look up Bones. Um, and I think we talked about it on the show. Um, um and it's yeah i can't i, I can hear the intro on everything um but yeah it's a really really cool show done by bones um it has uh i think it has mechs in it 
Um, and just the like the animation style from Burn the Witch like reminds me of shows that are do- usually done by bones. I'm not mm-hmm. sure if the show is done by bones. I don't think it is. What's the Japanese name? <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so uh, uh, so for Burn the Witch, um, I really like. I just like the design of all the characters. Um, I like how the, like usual, the blonde um, character is kind of like the wild and crazy one. Mm-hmm. Um, it's interesting that they they um, they ride on dragons. I do like all the different styles of dragon, like dog dragon, and I'm like, you just made that up. That's not a thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on, um, I, I gotta. You see, maybe that's where my like my thing came from because I hear dragons and I'm like I get all excited because I'm like <gasps> dragons, and then they're like it's a dog dragon. I'm like bullshit, <laughs> bullshit. Y'all ruined it. Yeah, um, there's um, and then like like just the the fight style, like like. This is one of the ones that I watched like a week ago. So I can't remember exactly everything. Oh, when the dragon, oh, you probably didn't see that part. So they, did you see where they upper, basically uppercutted the dragon with like a magic spell? No. Okay. So, um, so basically that, that air headed guy, like the empty headed guy, the hat that was like, yeah, walking dangling. with the flying dog, yeah. Yeah. So when, he finally stops, like, uh, they catch up to him, and they start kind of going into his backstory a little bit. He's basically kind of like a curse, where it's like, th- things are just drawn to him. So basically, dragons are attracted to him. Mm-hmm. And as soon as they say that, this giant dragon just shows up out of nowhere, and it's like, Meh. and I'm like, and, it, uh, and I say nah, like that because the face of the dragon looks like it would make that sound. <laughs> um. <laughs> this makes it worse. That sound should never come from a dragon. <laughs> it's a dumb looking dragon. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like just the most stupidest zombie in the world. <laughs> So, um, they uh, she casts this kind of um, like spell. It's like stun spell, and then, like just basically like hits the chin of the dragon, knocks the dragon out. It falls and like lands on this building. And then I'm like, just like with the Incredibles, how when the when a superhero saves a town, then all of a sudden there's insurance and like liability they have to go through and all that kind of stuff. I, ever since I've seen, ever since that show uh, that movie came out, I've always thought about that as far as like superhero movies and like any show that causes like a lot of destruction like with um evangelion like the new no the old ones did it too where like the the angel will attack and like the whole city like goes underground so stuff doesn't break um some shows actually like pay attention that like oh every time a monster oh even um um one punch man mm-hmm. like Anytime something would happen, they would like evacuate everybody, or there'd be some kind of protection against giant monsters that like destroy everything. This show, they don't talk about that at all. So me, I'm like, whose house is that 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 dragon just landed on? I'm like, who's gonna be paying for all this kind of stuff? Like, I don't know why that was one of my first things that I thought. It's like kind of like because they're just reckless fighting the monster. Maybe it's maybe it's because we you know have now come to have that thought put in our heads now becomes because of things like Age of Ultron and Superman and all those other superhero type movies that have now breached the subject of like collateral damage and the effects fighting these creatures monsters villains have on the populace and the buildings and the people around them. Yeah. And I would say another thing that comes from that is like characters that are 
conscious of their surroundings. Like Bakuga when he was um, no, no, not Bakuga. Um, no, you're uh, right. I think they, they if I know you're talking about. Well, the, when, the, when the they other, were the, the guy, the other guy, the main guy. Because when they were fighting, when they were fighting All Might, they um, in that training session, they used a part of the the town that they were fighting in that had already been destroyed by All Might Smash instead of going into a new area, in order to minimize the amount of damage that was done. Yes. Like when when they use when they use Bakugo's gauntlets. Yes. So that's a good example too, but then, um, like I guess. Being uh, the situation is that I'm trying to figure out what is the other guy's name? De- 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 Deku. 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 Yes, the so Deku. He's conscious of his surroundings when he can't get away from, like, get to somewhere safe. He'll mm-hmm. all, he'll he'll make sure that he doesn't mess up the surroundings that he's currently in. Like when he first met um, the All Might's teacher, and um, oh yeah yeah yeah. Oh no no or was it um or was it the um the other guy? Where he had to get something from him, but then every place that he jumped around, he made sure he didn't like step on like a like a painting or something like that on the wall, mm-hmm. and he made sure. Not oh to... yeah, you're talking about Night Eye. Night Eye, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we that like because of like all the media and stuff like that that like is worried about collateral damage. We there has been created characters that are aware of their surroundings and make sure that they don't destroy the city. These characters did not pay attention to that at all. Which is like, stun magic, uppercut, hits the dragon in the chin, knocks it out, it falls back, lands on a building. And like, too bad for everybody in that building. Um, <laughs> so, um, one thing, I was thinking that, and I'm like, okay, well now what are they gonna do? Are they just gonna be like, ah, dragon's dead, let's walk off? And they kind of started doing that. But then it went back to the dragon and like all of a sudden this like, you know when they uh, when like either there's a super thin wire or a really, really sharp sword and they're just like slice and nothing mm-hmm. happens right away. But then a couple of seconds later you see like this little line goes Sip! and then like it either falls apart or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So the same thing happened with the dragon's head. And I was like you said stun, not slice the dragon's face off. I was like, what? What kind of stun are you using? And then all of a sudden, the dragon's face just fell to the ground. And inside his head was another f- flat, like kind of like a pig nose, but it was another face. So, like, then it turned dark. Like, not fully black, but it, it turned dark. And I'm like, uh, is it decomposing? And then it started moving around. And I'm like, it's not dead. And they're like, <laughs> like alarms go off. They're like, air, air, we have a dark dragon loose. And I'm like, did y'all not know that thing could turn into a dark dragon? I'm like, how? Y'all have a system for that where you like block off the city because apparently they're only worried about dark dragons. They're not worried about regular dragons breaking stuff. So I'm like, okay. And then they proceed to fight the dark dragon, and it gets even crazier. And I'm like, action shows like that are shows that I'm like, they excite me. So (laughs) Burn the Witch, it is animated well, and the action is crazy. So I like it. Mm. I do I do know that you're a fan of dragons, so you have a higher standard. Like a doggy dragon is probably the dumbest thing that you've ever heard of. But I don't know. It's like if it was a dragon that like if it was a, a little fluffy dog that had tiny dragon wings that like floated next to a person, and he's like, hey, what are we doing today? I would have been like, no, <laughs> because I don't like little familiars that are look weird. So, <laughs> see now if it had been a little tiny dragon dog with like, you know, scales. You know, actually, if it actually had like, say it had been like the size of a medium-sized dog. Uh-huh. So and so it said like it had what looked like fur, but then going off like the back of it, 
from down the spine would have been like scales with then like the tail actually being maybe the tail of what a normal dragon would be and then having wings coming out from the side hmm. and maybe not being sentient like being able to talk but at least flying around like that having hmm. more of a look of a dragon yeah i could go okay fair enough you turned a dog into a dragon got it sure yeah. i'm on board <laughs> But it didn't look like a goddamn thing, like a goddamn dragon. <laughs> yeah. So, no. <laughs> Just, no. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> crazy to the action show, anime. Well, I really like it. Um, if you're a fan of dragons, it's like a huge fence. You're either on the other than in stuff with dragon stuff or like that's not how dragons work <laughs> so either you're willing to suspend your disbelief on what they think dragons are or you're like <laughs> oh, fuck off that's not a dragon <laughs> yeah so um i have no idea why it's burned the witch and, like they like cast spells they're like stun magic and like stun magic Cut your face off, <laughs> man! I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a game where one of the options in it is stun magic, and you just slice, decapitate somebody. <laughs> stun magic, and you're like, shush, and I'm, and everyone's gonna be like, how the hell is that stun? He's not moving anymore, is he? <laughs> I'll be like, you know what? I said stun magic. You're stunned right now, aren't you? <laughs> It's magic. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I wish I would have watched it, like, this week, because uh, there's a few more things about the show, but I just I just can't remember the details. Um, but, yeah, the last show we're going to be talking about is Sengoku no Sig... Sig- Drift. Or. <laughs> or. Well, Valkyrie something? Uh, Warlords of Sigurda? Yeah, okay, Warlords or, of. No, Sigurdjifa? Some other word. Okay, did you watch this one? Yes. What did you think? Ah. Uh... I like the characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, it reminds me of so many different things. It's like that that show that has the girls that are ships that fight. I'm at they... least glad that they don't turn into airplanes and fight. <laughs> yes. um, and then... I guess that's the only show it reminds me of. It reminds me of that, but it's like done differently. Because I can't say that it's really done well because there's certain like one thing that one thing that threw me off because of Funimation (laughs) it I set my account to be like Japanese with English subtitles. And every now and then, the, the app will be like, English? English with English subtitles. And I'm like watching the show, and the show starts out with a battle. And there's these these uh, fighter pilots. So they're mm-hmm. flying around in jets, and they're like, Mayday, Mayday, come in. We got to get them. And I'm like, that was kind of said weird, but oh well. They're... Some Japanese actor or actress or English actor or actress is speaking slightly off-sounding English. And then, like, he'll fly and then, like, see something. He's like, oh, my God, what is that? And I'm like, how long are these people going to talk? Like, are we going to switch over to the Japanese characters? Because uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm losing interest at, by, the, by the word. And he's like, did we get them? Oh my god! I'm like, 
And then the whole fight, they're just talking in English and fighting. And I'm like, okay. And then the fight's over. And then it cuts to somebody else. And he's like, welcome to our academy. And I'm like, something's wrong. Hold on. And I go to settings. And I'm like, oh, it's in English. Oh. So I go back, start the whole episode <laughs> over. It's all in Japanese. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, <laughs> Like I can't let's let's reset and um I like the characters, like I say. Uh it's it's interesting how there's like magical creatures, fighter jets like F sixteens and stuff like that, and then biplanes. Mm-hmm. And certain things I'm like I have a suggestion on how they could do it better. Mm-hmm. And then other times I'm like, man, that's cool. So my feelings about this, I'm like all over the place. Like one thing that I thought that they could do better was, I guess she has this magical bullet, and she's about to shoot it at the thing, and the thing has all these shields that it's just blocking stuff with. Yeah, as yeah. soon as she like locks and loads that magical bullet, it's like, oh, let me stack all of these shields in this tiny little circle <laughs> just and then she shoots it and it's just like crunch 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 dead and I'm like why and I was like okay <laughs> well, how did you says- feel about that show because I'm like all of them. I mean it's not it's not my most favorite show in the world I'm it's, actually kind of shocked that you watched it well, so I watched it mainly because in the very the synopsis of it, it was talking about um, oh, Odin and stuff like that. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, I'm I'm down for some Norse Norse stuff going on here. And you know, even Odin appeared in front of them and started talking about Ragnarok and all that, and said he'll help the humanity out and everything. And I'm I'm like, you know what? Here is an anime who is saying that only girls can can you know pilot these things or do these things but it actually makes sense because they're valkyries Mm -hmm. i'm like when he gave him that title i'm like now i understand why it's all female got it sure you're actually giving me reasoning other than well it's got to be an all-female i was like why can't a guy do it too why can't you have a guy in there? I mean, what's what's going on? Why is it always just all the female thing? You know, that's why I liked um was it I am Stratus or some like whatever that was these Infinite mech Stratos. Things. Infinite Stratos, yeah, 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 yeah. That's why I like that one because it kind of played on that trope because it was like they were all saying, Well, only females can can pilot these things, and he's like, I can pilot them. And I'm like, ah, a guy can pilot one of your fantasy doodads that you only say females can pilot, so... Ha! <laughs> I'm interested to see where this goes. Um, animation style, I enjoy. Characters, I also enjoy. I think we have a diverse group of characters all over their own personality. Yeah, uh, sure. No. Um, I like the fact that the main character... She has a reputation. She doesn't want to have this reputation. But she has this reputation of being... Of getting the job done, but sacrificing all those that she works with in order to do so. So, as it's been plainly told to her, or seen by her many a times, people tend to avoid her. People tend to be scared of her, because especially there... Now there's, like, this stigma around her of... If you get close to her, you're going to die. Um, and I like the fact that the very first time she goes to the new base in Japan from Europe, it's just like a complete 180 for her. Yeah. And I, I like that. I like the fact that in the, in, in the beginning, she was very formal, very you know militaristic. And the people that she's coming up to in this new base that she's at over in Japan are um, a lot more laxed. They're a lot more informal. Um, I, I, you know, it could, it is a trope, I will say, but I do enjoy the loudmouth mechanic 
Oh, uh, yeah. Gramps. Yeah. Pops. <laughs> I don't care who you are. I judge a person by their plane. You know, and then at the end of it, he's just like, well, you you push yourself, you push your plane, I'll make sure it's in top condition for you. And I'm like, see? Crotchy old man, but has a heart of gold kind of thing. You know, I, 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 I'm okay with the tropes like that, because, you know, it's nice to see every now and then. Yeah, um, and I, everybody's on board with that. It's not like the old, like the, like, the old man that's also kind of like a hermit because nobody else can deal with him. Like, yeah. all the other mechanics are like, He's like, come on, boys! And they're like, yeah! Well, the minute he yells at them, all of them stand to attention. And he's like, <laughs> what are y'all doing bloody gagging around here? We got work to do. Let's see. You know, because they wanted to talk with the, the new pretty girl or whatever and, yeah. and all that. Which, again, see, here are interactions. So often, I find people don't know how to do interactions. Either whether it be, like, actual physical interactions or dialogue interactions like that whole scene the way it played out i'm 100 percent believable because here you have a bunch of mechanics who are working on planes all day a very important job because obviously you got to kill the monsters you, you can't kill the monsters you don't have these planes available so a very important job but the minute cute girl walks in all work stops, and they're like, hey, how's it going? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> oh, hey, it's a cute girl. Hey, 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 You know, and they're not being overly, like, you know, bad about that or anything, but they are just, you know, obviously their attention has wavered. So then the fact that the boss comes running and going, hey, what the hell's going on over here? Y'all are just messing around. Ah, we need to get back to work. And immediately they, they, you have that knee-jerk reaction of someone who gets caught doing what something they know they shouldn't have been doing in the first place and they immediately stand to attention and apologize oh yes sir yes sir yeah, absolutely sir you know and i'm like yeah no that's that's 100 percent mm -hmm. you know so and, and you know the personalities of the girls are different but none of them are also unbelievable because to me, each one of them, you know, you can see a girl their age acting like that. You know, it's not like you're looking at some personality going, you should be like 20, 30 years old. Why are you like a little teenager, you know, acting like this? Or, oh, you're acting like a, a baby or whatever. But like, you know, it's, it's, it, they got the personalities different but right according to their age range they have good flow in regards to storyline and and interactions as far as things happening um i there's a lot left open right now but again this is the very first episode so i don't know if they're going to dive more into these sort of things because basically we were just introduced to odin he said these are my val you know i'll bless people with his valkyries or whatever and he only showed one, which is the main character that we're following around. But now all of a sudden, there's like multiple Valkyries, multiple named ones, and I'm like, did he did he name multiple Valkyries? What's, what's going on here? What do you know? I, I'm assuming more explanation to, is going to happen. We're just spending the first episode getting to know things. We're we're setting the stage. We're 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 kind of getting things ready, and then once we start going into this full ham. We'll continue then, and then we'll get some more backstory into it. Like, what the hell was that shield thing in the very beginning? Like, is that going to be like, is there some sort of like monster guarding each of them? Is is are they different monsters each time? Um, do any of them have anything? Because I could see something shield based related being part of like Norse. You know, like I could have seen like maybe those shields maybe being some sort of Norse thing or whatever. But like. Is that going to be a, a theme going along with them in each and every single time? Do these pillars have something to do with Rag? Like, there are questions that I kind of want to know. So, I'm willing to, you know, overlook maybe a few nitpicky things in regards to that. Because I think the best thing you can do in your very first episode is make your audience question. Is make your audience want to know more, want to know why want to know what is the deal with these things and and once you do that and once you have your audience hooked then you can develop things 
then you can then you can go from there. That's why you know a lot of people say when it comes to writing books, the most important you literally have sometimes even just the first sentence is your very most important sentence you could ever write. After that, you're just then filling in the blanks of whatever it is your first sentence gave to your audience. You know, and here we have first episode, same situation. So I'm not like gung ho about this by all sorts of means, but I'm not against it either. You know, this wasn't an immediate drop for me like everything else. I will probably continue it and see where it goes. I may drop it later on. I don't know. It kind of depends on how things go. Um, but I don't feel this is bad. I feel like this does have merit to it. And that there are certain things that can be taken from it. And, and I enjoy it. So that's my hot take on it. Um, I don't know which character I like the most. It's like when she was back at her previous base, there was this spiky dark haired one. Mm -hmm. And I was like, she looks interesting. I wonder what she... Oh, you will never see her again? Cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then you get this whole crew that like comes to escort the uh, the other um, ship. And they just take a bundle of characters and be like, here! And I'm like, wait, who's who? What? Okay, pink, red, green? Okay. Uh... Okay, and then the battle's over, and she's like, I'm Red! And I'm like, I know Red was flying the plane, but I don't remember what Red did. <laughs> and then she's like, I'm Pink! And I'm like, you don't even look like you can fly a plane, but sure. And then there's that part where they're on standby, and she's giving her a tour. And yeah. then they start eating, and then one of them's playing soccer. And yeah. she's just like, dribbling past everybody and it's like every other scene you see her in the background just like ah past you ah past you and I'm just like again I somebody think explain is, to me what's going on <laughs> I think I think this is a situation of when in, in regards to characters that what was the other one I said that was like you could I couldn't really pick a character oh the hundred uh you know mm -hmm. I stand on top of uh, because there's obviously character development that has to happen. Mm -hmm. We know that. The main character, the one we followed from the beginning, the blonde one, she has to get over the fact that she can work with a team and can and rely on a team and not feel like she's going to get people killed. Yes. So right now she's very closed, so it's a matter of she has to be able to open herself up. I feel like she do also doesn't want to be too careless because yeah. it's like... Even when she followed the rules to the T, she lost her team. Yeah. And then now she's at a team that's like less disciplined. And she's like, guys, we gotta keep it in check. Like that, like how they were all arguing about who's gonna be in charge. And then mm -hmm. she like, the one who's actually the leader was not in control of her team. No. So then she's like took charge, but then also it was like, Hey, what do you want me to tell these people? And she's like, We should do this. She's like, hey guys, <laughs> do this. And it like that was injured. That was fun. I will, and you know, but then you got you know, obviously, like you said, the the one who called himself Red. Um, you know, she's a little too carefree. She's a little too, you know, uh, oh, you know, the we, no one can fight on an empty stomach. You know, most important thing is to make sure you're you're fed, and you know, carefreeness. That's got to change a little bit. Not to say I want her to change all of it. But I think it's going to be dependent upon the situation. She has to be more disciplined in regards to that. Um, the other one, Pink, I think is just a little too soft-hearted, a little too soft-spoken. You know, she probably has more that she can do or more that she can say. But I think she's a little timid. And and and, and basically looking at it, I feel like she's kind of the quote-unquote mother of the group. Yeah. Um. But that might have to change a little bit, too. And then you have the leader, quote-unquote, that we came across, the one in, that was in the gray, whatever. And 
she doesn't really act like much of a leader. You know? So like she's always trying to prove herself. She is. She feels like she has to prove herself, but what she does in order to do that is incorrect. Um, so there's obviously a lot of character development and character growth involved in this, and I hope to see more of that and see where that leads to. I don't know where it will lead to, but my hope is is that, yeah, we will continue along that line and things will progress from there. Um, but, you know, it's hard to say which character I like the most just because, yeah, there's obviously flaws in everybody. And until we see who starts to really be willing to conquer that and, and progress themselves further, it's it's kind of be kind of up in the air. I, I like Red's carefree nature. I like her, uh, you know, fun, you know, well, you know, we're in a military base, but hey, let's, uh, you know, go talk with mechanics or go play soccer, or yada, yada, you know. I do like Pink's motherly nature. Is, is she may need to tone that down a bit or whatever, or, you know. But I do like the fact that she has sort of a mature air around her and does care, obviously, for the other team members greatly. Um, you know, and I do like the main characters, her ability to, you know, to handle situations. Like, she was in a very stressful situation, but she didn't panic. Mm -hmm. she, she really, she kept a calm, cool, and level-headed. And... I think that really says a lot. She just, you know, her actions and her abilities, I think, are needing further development in regards to that. Who had the sword? Was that Red? The sword? Yeah. They were fighting the monster, and then they came and dove down, and somebody pulled out a sword and sliced the core in half. I don't remember. Uh, the only person I could think of that did it would be Red, because she's the most outgoing. But... Oh, and then all the monsters turn into trees after you kill them? I'm well, like, I, I feel like I, there's some kind of thing behind Yeah, it. there's that. that's more going into um, Norse mythology. Because okay. I, I want to say that's representing the world tree. Ah, okay. Which, which kind of makes sense, because the world tree is supposed to be... Like, it would make sense for the monsters, because the world tree is supposed to be connected to other dimensions. So if it's being killed and potentially sent back to its own world or dimension, then it would be connected to the world tree. Uh, so. Okay. Um, yeah. So, yeah, this one's, this one's, this one's fun. I, uh, it's not a top, but it is one of the shows that I want to continue. Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, yeah, that is it for our 13 shows that we have talked about today. <sighs> When's the next one? Like, next week? <laughs> <laughs> no, we got a little more time in between that. Next one's going to be on the 29th. Three weeks. And is that going to be for the new season? Wait, why can't I hear you? I can't hear you. I know my sound's fine. <laughs> Turning up my headphones now. <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, what I was say, next one was going to be. Uh, yeah, it'll be for winter 2021. I have not looked at this list yet. Uh, you usually at least glance over it before we. Uh, yeah. Head out. So I guess maybe take a take a quick peek. Yep. So B star back. Any names come out? We well, got Dr. Stone. We never really stayed up with that one. I'm still on the first episode of that one. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, we got the red red blood cells and the one. Yeah. Oh, I think that was going to come out this season. First, I only watched the first uh, episode of that one. Wait. Oh, wait, there's two that are the same. Mm, not the same. I think cool. we went over We I talked about the thing. Because they're different production companies. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> ah, yep. There is this third season for Log Horizon. And the second season for Orpheus, or Orphan. Oh, yeah, I never got to that one. Where's Log Horizon? I heard Ore Dake Hirari, the hidden dungeon, was one you should really look out for. Okay, one second. Okay, there's Lock Horizon. Everything's all pastel coming. Cool. Okay, which one? Ore Dake Hira Kakyusho Dungeon? Hidden Dungeon? I was, I was heard that one was one to look for. Oh, okay. Uh, Final Season to Attack on Titan. This is going to be interesting. Second part for ReZero. And seven deadly sins. Which means we won't get it on Netflix until like fall 2021. Ooh, next season for slime. Did we ever watch World Trigger? Mm, I never did, no. Mm. Next season for slime. Tensei Shidere Slime. Oh, that is it. Oh, man. This season's going to be great. <laughs> and great. second season for Neverland. And even better, season two of Yuru Camp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Season two. Uh, Can't wait. <laughs> Can't wait. Oh, uh, nine nine beauty. Nope. I don't care how cute they are. No. The only ones can can even over from this season: Higurashi, Jujutsu, and King's Raid. So, Higurashi and Jujutsu. Higurashi's going across two seasons. Yep. Yeah, apparently. they're blending them together. So, it was 12 and 12, I think. Was it? I thought it was 24 on the original one. Maybe I'm thinking wrong. Huh. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we got we to gotta parallel to this one. Like, I'm, I'm, ah, ah. Okay, dude, new stuff. Uh, there's this one creature that kind of reminds me of Stitch, but he's white. Kumo Desuka Nanika. No, that's a spider. Oh. Okay, I see the extra arms. That's a spider. <laughs> so no for you? That's a no. That's a hard no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well this show is uh, Idols. That is CG. An Idolly Pry? Hmm. X arm looks cool. We won't be able to watch B Stars because that's going to be on Netflix. And it's two, four, three. I'm confused. Oh, it's volleyball. Okay. And then the five redheaded girls. Hmm. <laughs> Black Arrow. Is that like a Marvel show? Back Arrow. Never mind. I'm mixing Green Arrow and Black Adam. <laughs> yeah, the next season looks like it's going to be fun. Yeah, I would agree. A lot of sequels. All right. Well, um, yeah, I'm taking a break at 
what the latter half of December. So mm-hmm. no promises, but I should be able to catch up on some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we shall see. Yeah. We shall see. All right. Well, yeah, we will be back on the 29th for our upcoming thoughts on these trailers. And, yeah. As always, this is DK and Shade from Takoyaki Anime. Thank you for watching. Thanks for hanging out in chat. Thanks for supporting the channel in any way that you do. And we will catch y'all next time.